to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Please pray. Salabrande ke te barato supra te ke te balata ba. Je ke te pratus ke te brande ko te balata pradia. Inte ka tu sada pratis ke te prati ke te bala. Sila barus ke te prati ke te bala. Pre malis ko brans ke te ba hashala prati ke te bala da. Supra te ke te barato sada prati ke te bala da. Ente la pulsa si pensi di me Shala barato sa di me di me di me di me Spato di me di me di me di me di me Shala barato da scata pata di me di me di me E prato uso di me di me di me di me Ka prato uska paru uska di me di me Shala barato ka paru uska di me di me Entelato bradu sadi bradu sadi bradu Shala baruta sadi bradu sadi bradu Shala barata bradu sadi bradu sadi bradu Shala barata sadi bradu sadi bradu sadi bradu Don't be tired. We're opening up your spirit. Shalabarata seta pakoto shabrende mi dubalas.
says do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess he says but be ye filled with the spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms hymns spiritual songs psalms hymns spiritual songs these are songs of the spirit these are not songs composed by men. These are not songs to wax an album. They are spirit communications. Oh, yeah, yeah, say. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Say. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, help us this morning. You are our helper. Jesus gave you to us as an advantage, the advantage. And I pray that this morning, let veils be torn. Grant us the grace to behold with accuracy. Teach us the precepts of the kingdom and help our hearts to understand. Be glorified again even this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down if you can. Let your heart be open. Thank you. By the grace of God, Foundations have been laid right from Wednesday, I believe. And so I know that by now, our spirit man is really open to receive and to be blessed. There are many factors that govern the dispensing of truth. One of it is capacity. 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 One of it, please just be, anybody's under the anointing, just, just help them guide them. Capacity. Many times, a man's capacity is a force in the realm of the spirit. And it sustains an ability to pull truth. We call it hunger. Are we together now? So it is important. The oil always stops when there is no more vessel. So sometimes we pray not because we're interceding for anything. It's a system in the spirit that was designed to enlarge us so that more can be poured. Praise the Lord. The Bible says when we pray in the spirit, we are being built up. 
So it's, it's, a, it's a system of spiritual architecture that it is possible for a man to pray himself into a larger version. You can pray yourself into a version that can host what you could not host yesterday. It was Jesus who was speaking in John 16. He said, I have many things to tell you. He says, but ye cannot bear them now. You do not sustain the ability to bear them. But then speaking, he said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come? He says, he shall guide. Guide. He didn't say he shall show. He didn't say he shall give. He shall guide. He will not only give you, but he will coordinate your understanding of it. Hallelujah. I truly have a lot to share, and I pray that God will grant us grace. It is my prayer. It was my prayer even coming that God will help us. This morning, because this is a revival series, um, what I'm teaching this morning is important, it's for everybody, but it's not exactly for a new believer. Because what I'm sharing, please listen, is pivotal to your efficiency in the kingdom. I'm going to be sharing with you what the Lord put in my heart and it's very interesting because the title of this session this morning is what could be wrong. We want to x-ray our spiritual lives. It's a check. It's like, it's like a patient going into the theater and there's, there's about to be a search to find out what exactly could be wrong. The apostolic office is a very interesting office because it's not an office that is for preaching. The primary assignment of a true apostle is not preaching. The primary assignment of an apostle is spiritual governance to make sure that within a defined territory, the truths allocated for a dispensation is released and guided and taught within the boundaries of its relevance. So the first assignment of a true apostle is the sacrifice of alignment to be able to capture the body of knowledge allocated for a dispensation. Because you see, the revelation of God is dispensational. You know that. Every dispensation has an assignment it's like a spiritual curriculum of God that you must know within that dispensation. Praise the Lord. And the apostolic alongside the prophetic as the foundation of the church, they have been mandated with the responsibility to capture the dimensions of God allocated for that generation. Are we together now? And then to make sure that the administration of that truth is done within the confines of balance, within the confines of efficiency. Praise the Lord. That means that a true apostle should be able to step into a territory and discern the dimensions of God absent within that territory because their assignment is to create completion. Are we together? So their grace answers to deficiencies. The moment the nature of the office can mold you to anything so that you can supply. So an apostle can come into a meeting and become a prophet in that meeting. That may not be his major area of call, but the flexibility of the office allows you to switch so that you can supply that missing dimension. You know a true apostle when you are confused about who he is. That example was seen in Jesus. At a point, they didn't know who he was again. Who are you? To the point that when he asked, who do men say I am? They said, thank you. We have been asking because even we ourselves, we've been walking. You are this today. You are that tomorrow. Today you are with children. Tomorrow you are at the well. Like someone who wants to, you know, you are with one woman. Then tomorrow you are with a crowd. That, who are you? Where? I mean, what is all this? Jesus became all things to all men. 
the apostle, the model. Are we blessed? So it is very important. Truly, let me tell you, conferences like this uh, is a solemn assembly. It's a call, right? It's a call for men and women who represent nations and systems. This is not the kind of teaching you receive for your personal edification. No. These kinds of teachings are teachings that are generational in scope. God selects people to come for these kinds of meetings. So that if you find yourself in this kind of meeting, it's because you are Jacob and Israel is waiting for you. You see that? Yes. These are the kinds of meetings where he sends a word to Jacob for the sake of Israel. It, these kinds of revelations cannot be just for personal edification. The scope and the depth is too much for just a personal edification. So you are listening for a generation. You are listening for a family. You are listening for a system. I've studied the body of Christ and I've studied spiritual growth and I've studied the progress of believers from scripture, modern history, and even in today's world. And I have found out a few things that are seriously wrong. And these are some of the things that I hope to address. Remember, this is a revival series. It is, it is to call us to a greater level of stability. The Bible says the fivefold or fourfold as we know were called to mature the saints. To mature the saints. The only dimension of growth that happens automatically is biological. Every other growth is engaged. <clears throat> Are we together? So... Pastor, I found a number of things that are wrong with our journey, our system of mentorship, the pathway to knowing God. I'm, I'm being careful so that I don't delve into what is outside of my teaching. We have a lot to cover. I'm glad that I have four sessions. This is the first. Please don't miss anyone. Pay whatever price to just pay attention. Are we together now? In the kingdom, when it has to do with knowing God and working with God, creativity is not a requirement. You are not given the liberty to invent your way of knowing God. There is already a predefined part that predates your arrival. You are not given the luxury of invention and creativity. Your assignment is to find the path and walk therein. Are we together now? Because there are many ways to enter a house. But Jesus said, I am the door. No house has only a door, sir. There are windows. Are we together? And like it happened in the ministry of Jesus, you can't even tear the zinc and enter. You are only invited and welcomed when you pass through the door. So Jesus said, I am the door. That means the authorized access point. Not the only, but the authorized. So it's possible to route the knowledge of God through many mechanisms. A visitor will not jump to a window and enter your house and you say you are welcome. Find a seat. No. So it matters how we know God. It matters who teaches us what about God. It matters the things that we know. There are many things wrong. This is the explanation Behind the frustration of many well-meaning believers. God will in these few minutes answer a lot of questions. Including the questions you came with. Because many believers are becoming frustrated. There's something about this thing we call Christianity. By the intuition of the spirit they know something is wrong. They don't know what is wrong. And they may not know how to correct it. But they know that this can be God. God cannot be this dull and deficient to not put a provision. The lapse in our lives, the imbalances here and there, the frustrations that come in seeking God, the 
difficulty sometimes that is created around our experiences that sometimes can be justified the mixing of our flesh and the anointing to mean all came from God we have to do a surgery this morning to separate which one is God and which one is a product of our limitations you have a lot to learn this morning in the name of Jesus Christ what could be wrong with a Christian life that is ever learning but the rate of assimilating truth versus the rate of transformation does not match are we together now what could be wrong with a member who has been faithful in church for many years and never able to come into a level of stature in the spirit what could be wrong with a well-meaning believer who loves God with all his heart and yet cannot be able to find a basis of meeting his needs what could be wrong with a man who seeks God for many years and turns back to fight what was once his conviction because Jesus told us that if he builds his church he will build it with a formation that the gate of hell cannot prevail where is the line between the trainings of the spirit and the oppression of the devil where is the line where is the line between the knowledge of the will of God and the ignorance that comes from a depraved mind that is not transformed tell somebody what could be wrong I'm going to talk about three things that I truly believe will change our lives. We're addressing these things to clear the hurdles that stand on our way to knowing God, to being effective in ministry, and so on and so forth. The first thing I want to discuss this morning under this subject is the concept of apostasy. Please write it down apostasy apostasy please look up write it and then look up let me teach apostasy is a deviation a deviation from the known patterns of God apostasy is a deviation from the known patterns of God God is not only a God of progress God is not only a God of revelation but he is a God of methodologies he's a God of patterns so apostasy is said to happen to a man a church a territory an individual to the degree to which by whatever reason they deviate from the ordinances of God they deviate from the patterns of God and apostasy is usually ministered by shepherds. When it has to do with the subject of apostasy, members, you can rest. Let's deal with leaders. Because every house is built by some man, although God is the builder of all. So every house, every territory is a reflection of the mentorship of the spiritual leaders. Are we together? You can look at a territory and randomly pick the believers in that territory and you can draw a healthy statistic about the revelation and the communication of spiritual truth within that territory. The health of believers within a territory is a measure of the accuracy, is a measure of the balance, is a measure of the offices that are present within a territory. Hallelujah. Apostasy. There are two dimensions to apostasy. I want to hurry up because what I'm talking about is not even apostasy. I just want to start by talking. The first dimension of apostasy is 
a state where a man and a leader was never of God from the beginning. We're not talking of error. We're not talking of backsliding. Are we together now? So we're talking about a situation here where it is possible for a man to hold the mic on the pulpit and to teach and to share but was never of God. Never. It would be a joke to believe that everybody that has access to a mic and has access to teaching is of God. No, sir. No, sir. You will be joking. Please listen. When Jesus was about to send the disciples two by two, when he sent them after they went, he saw something about the new methodology of Satan. Until then, Satan would come through many ways. But when he looked up, he saw Satan translating like light. Remember now, we are dealing with light here. So Satan had tried to come as darkness. And he said, this does not work. So Jesus, while they were on the mission field, he was watching the next strategy of Satan. He said, look, my system of operation now will be a translation. I will come in the similitude of an angel of light. What do we call the shepherds of a church? The angel. Right to the angel of this church. So Satan can appear as an angel of light. The fact that he can appear as an angel is not the problem. But he can appear as an angel of light. Let me tell you what that means. An angel of truth. A truth can destroy more than a lie. Because truth is more powerful than lies. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless. Please listen very carefully. So it is possible that hell can release an arsenal of individuals. Are we together now? That can gain influence. I hope you know that this she goddess called Jezebel is a system. Are we together now? When you study the Bible carefully, theologically speaking. Now these things are theologically speaking. Where you have to, to see the formation of this mystery system that we later call Babylon. Because according to scripture, Babylon like that started the first manifestation of Babylon as we see. You have to go back to the beginnings, Genesis. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible talks about Cain. You know it, most of you know, how that he departed from the presence of God and there he built a tower. Are we together? Named it after his son, Enoch. Because no man can give himself glory. You invest your glory on what comes out of you. That's how you get glorified. You don't get glorified in yourself. You have to produce something outside of you. The excellency of what you have produced is how you get glory. Father, the hour has come. Glorify now thy son, that thy son may glorify you. It's called the reflection principle. Hallelujah. So we're discussing the issue of apostasy here. That it is true that you can find people who are sincere, who are loving, who are honest, but are not of God. It is possible for you to be at the park, about to take a motor car, and you see a sincere man come with a beard and tap you and say, John, how are you? There's a problem in your family. And you just turn and say, it's true. You say, where is BC? You say, ah, where, where do I know you from? You say, if you want some more information, follow me. Just because that man gave a word of knowledge and it was accurate. Anything accurate means the power of God is what was employed. <laughs> Every power on earth is the power of God. Including the power used by witchcraft. The Bible says, once have I spoken and twice have we heard that all power belongs to God. It is the system of routing that power. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That means that in the kingdom, results are not as important as how they were produced. Please sit down, sit down. We're, we're starting. Let's not rush this thing. Praise the Lord. 
We call it a revival series. Just because I prophesy or just because I pray for you being barren and you return back with a child is not a validation that I'm of God. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is not a call to be sarcastic and to just have ideas in your mind because many of the people you think are fake are not fake. Let me balance quickly what you are saying so that you don't carry a depravity of spiritual understanding or a prior bias that has been there. I'm not confirming your bias. So you don't sit down based on the limited revelation you have and say, oh, that means that pastor at the back of my house. No, no. It's very difficult to be of the devil. Don't you think Satan wants everybody? I hope you know Satan too has trouble in his life. He's not free just moving around looking for people to oppress. Satan has worries and troubles too. Number one, he knows his time is short. Don't you think that should be a concern? It is possible for one, two, three, four, five, six of you to go and donate yourself to Satan. And say, on behalf of myself and my future, I give myself to you. Satan will say, wait. He will look through you. You will be surprised. He will choose only two. You say, the rest go. I will oppress you occasionally, but to be used. Satan does not use everybody. There are requirements. We have this idea that, he, no. Do you know what it takes? The same labor in the spirit it takes to be real. Is what it takes to be fake. If I ask you to be fake, you will not be interested at a point because the labor that comes with it. We just have this idea that you just take a charm and deceive people. My God. Hallelujah. Did you see how the prophets of Baal tried to call down fire? You, you look at all the rigor. Will you like to go that, through that process? See the different skills they kept changing from morning till night. The last card was to cut themselves. As part of the strategy. That means they, they were bringing from the archives of the, the strategies that if all fails, use blood. Cut yourself. But it's true that there are people who have paid that price to be used by the devil. And they are being used by the devil. Deceiving many and being deceived. So it's possible to come into a meeting and receive an impartation. And the moment you walk out of that meeting, a strange spirit of lust comes on you. You fell under the anointing and got up. And from that day you cannot see women and leave them again. You came to church. Oh. It's possible that you come receive an impartation and go back and your prayer life dies. Your passion for God dies. Everything dies. It's, a, it's strange because the more you are committed, the more you are dying. There are a few of such people on earth, but they are there. But the second dimension of apostasy that is important for our discussion is when genuine people teach wrong doctrines. This is even more dangerous. First Timothy chapter 4. The Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Please give it to us if you can have it. Now the spirit expressly saith, give us King James KJV if we have it, no problem. It says that in the latter times, some shall do what? Depart from what? The faith. It says giving heed to, wow. Spirits can seduce. And then the doctrine of devils. There is a doctrine, sir, called the doctrine of devils. That when a man deviates from the faith, the second phase is that you are going to start hearing spirits as before. But it will no longer be the spirit of God. 
you are hearing a spirit communicate impulses that look sincere look true prophesying and before you know it it is another spirit that is taking over and the bible says as a result they will begin to teach something called the doctrine of demons let me tell you the truth there are doctrines fabricated from hell are we together now and released to the earth and sincere and well-meaning people have received these doctrines either because of the the theological pleasantness of those doctrines or the acceptability of those doctrines or the rewardability of those doctrines whatever is the basis those doctrines have been received and have been communicated and satan uses the same system god uses when he wants to reach a people he finds a man and ensures that man has enough influence to not be probed and because we're a generation that does not study we're a generation that just receives anything hook line and sinker that Berean dimension is not there so it is easy for an error to spread fast i can stand on these pulpits now and with all of the honor you have for me and i'm grateful for that but it is possible that while standing here i can say something that is dangerous not of god it will be difficult for you to doubt you know i love you these doctrines are not brought by wicked people this doctrine does not come from a wicked heart it comes from a heart that has been manipulated let me give you an example of such a doctrine in the bible jesus is with the disciples listen carefully and he's discussing his departure he's in his final days before his passion would start are we together and then satan came the other time to oppress him jesus after his prayer and fasting and he left he returned back and satan studied all the disciples and found out that one of the most compassionate among them who had influence was Peter. And Satan used the door of compassion to plant a doctrine in his heart. And Peter comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, don't say you will leave us. Don't talk about death. Don't. And Jesus looks at him and says, no. Get thee behind me, Satan. Jesus, why will you call that compassion? You would have looked at that and said, oh dear Peter, I've always known you love me. You are such a nice man. You other wicked 11, I'm talking about death. You don't have the sympathy to even, no. Peter was a victim of that manipulation. Another time, Jesus wanted to wash the feet of his disciples. Remember? And Peter said, no, no, no. You will not do this. You will not do this. And Jesus said, no, no. I have to do this. You don't even understand the significance of what I'm doing. Now, when Jesus rebukes that spirit out of Peter, what does he say? Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith, they shall depart from the faith first. I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. He says, and when thou art strengthened, converted, strengthen your brethren. That means you will come for them. Every one of them will have to go through that test. It is possible for you to be studying about the anointing and you just see a site that looks Jewish and Arabic and you see one powerful Greek word that looks very tempting. Now adding that Greek word to your theology will increase your ministerial CGPA. So you begin to study and in studying it, you can delve to certain aspects. They are not exactly wrong. Then you move a little to Zodiac. You move a little to Scientology. And then you just do a little of, you know, all kinds of things. And you see the fundamentals of divination just hidden through that thing. And you read it and, and you are awakened to a new enlightenment. And you are saying, wow, this is powerful. I never knew. You begin to see the relationship of sound and matter. And this, you say, after all, all power belongs to God. Seducing spirits. You were studying sincerely to teach believers. Listen very carefully. Experiences are very risky. When you train people based on experiences, you will soon destroy them. 
I will show you. The riskiest way to mentor believers is through an experience. The chances of accuracy is very small. This morning, the way you are looking at me, I want to believe that the word is entering you. The doctrine of demons. A good man can teach the doctrine of demons. There are many doctrines. Let me tell you this. And very quickly, we'll go to Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. The whole chapter was a blasting of pastors. God was fed up with the nonsense that was happening. Ah, you see it there. It's a long read, you know. Should we read it? You'll be reading it by yourself. One, two, go. Woe unto the pastors that do what? Destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Say it who? Don't take it personal. This is Bible. Go ahead and read. Next verse. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings. There are people like this. Otherwise, God will not be talking. Next verse is a long reading. I don't know where we'll stop. Any part of the verse you can choose is still saying the same thing. Are we together? Let's go to verse... Let me, let me look for the verses and handpick them for the sake of time. Because I have a lot. Everyone said again, we are going to be praying in tongues. Praise the Lord. Well, let's read to verse 4. And then we will jump to verse 9. But which, which verse will, will we not read? Because everything is really important. I'm telling you, this is a, a very serious message to the pastors. Let's read to verse 4. And then I'll be giving us what verses to read. Verse, verse what now? 3, please read. 1 to go. Mm -hmm. this is the revival now please go to verse 9 let me read let me read from verse 11 go to verse 11 please for both prophet and priest are what? profane. Yea, in my house I have found their wickedness. This is God talking. Verse 13. We are reading 13 down to 16. I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesy in Baal. And cause my people Israel to err. Is this in your Bible? Next verse. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. What is it? They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen the hands of evildoers that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants as Gomorrah. Verse what now? Therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with warm wood and will make them drink the waters of God. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. We can even just stop here. When you read further, you will see that they prophesy and they bring visions. And those visions are not of the Lord. Let's read verse 21. We'll just read 
verse 21 down to 26. Then I will just stop there. 21 to 26. 1, 2, read, please. I have not sent these prophets. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, hold on. Who now made them prophets and who sends them? He said, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they. He didn't say they prophesied lies. They prophesied. But if they have stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Read on. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Next verse. Can any hide himself in secret places that I cannot see him, saith the Lord? Do I not feel heaven and earth? Next verse. Read on. I have heard what the prophet said that prophesy lies in my name saying i have dreamed i have a dream i have dreamed how long shall this be in the hearts of the prophets that prophesy lies yea they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart let's stop there what they are saying is called lies not because it is not accurate it is called lies because it didn't come from god so if I speak from God huh, and I speak to you the same way even if your situation does not match what I said you can't say what I said is a lie because it came from God. The same way if I speak and it's not from God even if what I say is accurate God calls it a lie. It is not the correctness of the information that makes it truth or lies. It is the source that delivers it. Apostasy given to the doctrine of demons now let me talk very briefly on how God builds men still on apostasy and show you where some of these errors come from praise the Lord now listen to me you see when can I use you can I use any any two gentlemen or anybody in the congregation just two, two of you come thank you please stand here stand here watch this now, do you know that when we start our walk with God, Pastor Shola, God bless you, sir. Let's honor him. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, watch this, please. Remember our topic, what could be wrong? We're examining the factors that inhibit our rising to our full spiritual potential. And one of it we're looking at is the concept of apostasy, a deviation from the patterns of God. Do you know that if these two believers start their Christian experience, now they don't know what they are going to become. It does not yet appear. So we all start the same. Are we together? Now say this man is called into the prophetic ministry. And this guy is called into say um, the academia. When both of them start with God, they are praying, they are going to church. There is a level they will get to. There will be a spiritual divergence. The nature of their office will now begin to customize their dealings. You will find out that this guy will find out that an unusual grace for prayer has come on him. Whereas they used to be prayer partners. Now they no longer can be prayer partners because this guy is tired. He has tried for two hours and he wants to go and read. He's thinking of his MSc in UK. Whereas this guy, after two hours, he wants to go and a new vision starts. And he stretches for another three hours. The nature of what they are becoming defines the level of the training are we together there are things this guy will be at liberty to do and god will keep quiet when this guy wants to do it god will say no, hold on the nature of what you are becoming prohibits you it may not be seen but it's a prohibition you are like a nazarene it's a covenant your life is subscribing to because of what you are becoming please listen very carefully you have to get what i'm teaching you so this guy, because of this experience, watch this. Chances are that in God dealing with him, because he is going to be a prophet, God is not going to teach him anything about financial prosperity. Are we together? He's not even going to teach him anything about excellence and administration. It cannot be captured in the details of his dealings. God will focus on the area that becomes what, what we call the signature of his call. 
there will have to be an outspoken dimension of the spirit the nature of god's dealings is that god will reveal a dimension of himself to him now watch this this is where the danger is by the time this guy comes to the pulpit and now starts using his dealing as the template the theology upon which he mentors members it will be destructive he may be a sincere person but death will start because only those who are called according to his pattern will benefit from that sermon. Please listen. This is how error spreads in the body. It is possible that because God is calling me into a unique call, God can give me restrictions and say to be most effective you can't have more than three children this is my requirement if you have more than three children then the burden of fatherhood will not allow you to be effective and i have gauged you and seen that three children is the best are you getting the point now that is a personalized dealing you cannot make a doctrine out of it it does not pass the test to be a doctrine that means that it cannot be a spiritual template for mentorship i show you where we men of god have sincerely been destroying people so we are molding people who are not caught along our angles and we are creating unwritten rules that makes them know that if you don't follow this pathway you are wrong it's not so the pathway you know is not the only pathway it's the pathway that was defined for you what could be wrong why do we have sincere people who continue to feel guilty because they didn't see any vision and based on the theology that was communicated your spiritual growth should be measured by the visions and dreams you have so said the man of god the man of god who mentored you and since that is not your experience what god is leading you to you begin to fight it because you have been forced that the template followed by your mentor is the ultimate representation of God. It's a serious error. You don't have to be evil. Any one of us can become a victim. And I'll tell you why. The bias that comes, you have to be emotionally connected to your experience to carry the grace in that experience. So every time you stand to teach, the, the blessings you have received from your experience, you want the people to have it. And that is sincere. And Satan comes and uses your compassion like he used Peter. He came through Peter's compassion. I, 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 I don't know if, 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 if we are... So Jesus told Peter, Satan has desired to sift you and he used the window of your sincere compassion. Chances are that if I had the privilege to be raised by a father who was an entrepreneur and a very great man, I had the opportunity to have business savvy at a very young age. Are we together now? And by age 17, 18, I'm a multi-millionaire. By the time I hear someone who went through all kinds of things, I look at the person and I say, oh dear, I really pity you. Because life is only principles. When this guy is praying and all of this, I say, look, there is no devil anywhere. The only devil is the devil in your brain. It's not my fault because the nature of the leverage I received, listen, someone had paid the price for me and so it made it easy. So in my Christian experience, the value of prayer and consecration was not captured there. So when I'm mentoring people, I would trivialize the issue of prayer I would trivialize fasting. I would say, well, what is fasting for? What is prayer for? And I'm the only one who is succeeding because that template was carved out for my uniqueness. What then is the excellency of the Holy Ghost given to individuals? He will guide you, not as a group. There is a path, a mark for your destiny. And it is the assignment of the Spirit of God to guide you an exact body of truth allocated for your destiny. Please sit down. Hmm. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. 
Eternity's holy King. Blessed are you, O Lord, our Lord, whose words brings up the evening. But I can't have none of I am, of I am. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up. With understanding you order the seasons Creating day and night Turning darkness into light Arranging the stars to your pleasing Listen If you pay attention to what I'm telling you It will not make you hate anybody But you will be an agent of balance you will know where to run to your house and say, I know where the problem is now. When we got born again, not that the pastor was bad, but the system of mentorship is why darkness prevails over this family. The most powerful prayer warrior prays for 15 minutes because he's following the path of the business mogul who has everything working in place. And remember, your assignment is to be an apostle or to be a prophet. And there is a requisite level of spiritual investment you must make per day to attain unto that. Per day is added. If it does not match up after a threshold period, you will repeat it again. So when everybody is praying one, one hour, you can finish and you want to turn your plate upside down. God said, I hope you know you are going seven days. He said, Lord, why me? And he says, have you forgotten the prophecy your mother told you? What did the man tell her before you came? The person who is your prayer partner, the problem he's praying for, you are the answer. So you can't pray the same hour just because you started together. You are part of the people. He's part of the people you were sent to. There are people because of their assignments. You can't enter a relationship twice. God will prohibit you. Any guy that there's nothing like trial and error. Say, Let's see how things home. The nature of the child that must come out from your womb. There, there is a preservation. Are we together? Yes. And like Abimelech. When you look at a particular lady. Say my God I'm considering you will have a dream that night. God said, don't near this girl. You can choose anybody around, but there is prophecy. There's too much on this destiny and the womb that that child will bring for you to be careless and in the name of love, destroy that person. Now, when that person is teaching about relationship, this is going to be the person's template. If you ever have more than two or three people, you are not in the will of God. That's not true. It was a template defined because of the nature of what you are carrying. Imagine that Mary was going to teach about fertility. Do you know what the theology of Mary will be? Men are not very needed. Ghosts and spirits can get people pregnant. And she has the results. How many people in the Bible... Did the Holy Ghost get pregnant? When you build doctrines out of personalized dealings, listen very carefully. I, there's no time I would have shown you a man in the Bible, sir. When Jesus was speaking to the seven churches in Asia Minor that represented the Catholic Church, the Universal Church prophetically, he spoke about a particular prophet called Balaam. Huh? When you read from Numbers 22 to 24, you will see what the Bible calls the error of Balaam. What was the error of Balaam? Balaam was called to, by Barak to, prof, to prophesy against the nation of Israel. And he, he knew that God was not in him, with him. Why? Because there was a formation of Israel. The ark being in the center. 
and that formation was a spiritual system of fortification the ark being in the center and they were all stationed according to their tribes that spiritual formation cannot allow a cause to work so he knew that trying to cause them would be a waste of time when you study there balaam used divination and when he tried it still didn't work and he told them he said do you know what i've done my best and they said i know your problem they motivated him with a lot of money they sent their nobles they used influence he said come there has to be a way you are not a small prophet we know you you just don't want to do this thing and he was motivated and then they now sent nobles with money and he was now in that era and then eventually when you study balaam used a strategy he said i can't curse them but i can share with you something that will make them curse themselves he says the only way you can curse these people is to make them do something against god and so he said try to introduce a system of immorality there and you will corrupt the spiritual formation and by themselves they will be cursed balaam now listen very carefully when apostle peter was teaching this apostle peter called it the way of balaam so it had moved from an error as you know theologically to the way a methodology it started as a man's weakness but now it had grown it is now a formula by the time you get to revelations it's called the doctrine of balaam so god told me you will never have a church in the u.s for instance that is a personalized dealing it's a way an error i can now begin to preach there's no need having churches overseas it becomes a methodology why because i will mentor people after that template they will write books after that template bible schools will adopt it in honor of the mentor who taught it and then after 10 15 years nobody can argue with it again you don't have the power to argue with it the people that have received it are too influential for you to fight it then a time comes when it becomes the fabric of a bible school that means the, the, the teaching, the entire Bible school was taught from that error. Hallelujah. Is God helping us tonight? The danger of personalized dealings. There are certain things that are my personal covenant with God. I will never teach it in the open. These are things between me and God. They are the preservers of the grace upon my life. It's an ordinance between me and God to say, son, I understand the path I'm bringing you to. And based on where I'm taking you, I will create a formula and a set of disciplines. It's not convenient, but that is the price you have to pay to host this level of grace. The jurisdiction of mentorship must be scripture, not experience experience only forms supporting structures when the foundation is there and that from a child thou has known the holy scripture that is able to make you wise are we together now acts chapter 20 and verse 32 please give it to us let's hurry up goodness you know i've not even covered You see, eh, conferences like this, real believers meeting takes time. Oh. Our fathers, you know those days, Kenneth E. Hagin, they will spend 30 days non-stop. If you don't know God, they will, you wonder what are they teaching. This is what happens to a preacher who doesn't know God. If all you do is to download messages, you will be tired. You can't have the grace to exhaust three hours. It's not very easy to steal information like that and remember. It must be your experience. Where are we? Acts chapter 20. Please read it with me. One, two, go. And now, brethren, I commend you to and to stop, stop, stop. This is Apostle Paul, accredited and approved by God. 
and also approved by miracle signs and wonders approved by the threefold cord of the church that can e not be easily broken he received the hand of fellowship his apostolic calling was validated by the appearance of jesus please keep that scripture there he's it's like a handover service and he's saying look i am concerned about your safety and i need to show you the things that you, that define the jurisdiction of safety i commend you first to god number two to the word of his grace and he says it is able to build you up number one number two to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified experiences are risky the margin of error there is very wide I can have an experience that is 60% revelation and 40% flesh and because I'm still growing spiritually as at the time I'm teaching it I would not know the flesh is 40% so I would teach everything together when you now learn it and you are suffering from it I will now grow later and discover that what I taught you before that you have believed so much and you have mentored others is not correct. Is God helping us? It's a revival series. We came to be challenged, to be more circumspect with our approach. The idea is not to run away from people. The idea is not to be sarcastic. But the idea is to understand that the surest security is the jurisdiction of scripture allotted to help men know God. Experiences are powerful. Let me tell you by the grace of God and you know this, I live in the realm of experiences. You see that? The number of things I see per day, I say it with all humility. If many people see it, it will be enough to write a book. You cannot imagine how many things I've seen from the time I started preaching. It takes discipline to see so much and yet be quiet. Moses was a prophet and his mouth did not open. When small of his spirit came on 70 elders, not one of them could keep quiet. Yet one man was holding all that and he was quiet. Every dimension of the spirit is, is garnished with self-control. Anything minus self-control will bring misuse. You need self-control. There are doctrines that we have brought in church that sabotage the will of man. And when you study the ordinances of men with God alongside redemption, there are fundamental rights that God gave man. Not the new man in Christ, man. Man as an entity, there are things that God gave man. And any preacher that tries to take it from you is, is bewitching you. One of it is the right to choose. This is something that God gave man. You don't have to be born again. Once you are a man, it is part of God's gift to you. The riskiest thing to ignore is salvation. Even salvation submits to that law of your ability to choose. I said before you life and death. Won't you help me by choosing life for me? Do you want me to die? I said before you life and death. If there was only the tree of life in the garden, then God could not say man loved him. The proof of obedience is when you are given the opportunity to disobey. If you are not given the opportunity to disobey, you cannot be said to have obedience. Apostasy. So there are so many of us right now, probably, in our different prayer groups. You know, there was a time that there was such a move where I come from, you know. Zaria is a place that God has really blessed with an investment of his spirit. And there was a time that a great move started. It didn't last two weeks. And God withdrew that move till tomorrow. I will tell you, by the grace of God, we had the privilege to be some of the pioneers of these dimensions of God. It was when people started having supernatural experiences. They would see feathers, gold dust, and all of that kind of thing. They would be praying and oil. I had these experiences where oil, physical oil, would come out of my eyes. 
These things were emblems. They were similitudes. They were messages. They were not supposed to be magnified. One of the major reasons why the Holy Spirit conceals his personality and does not come in bodily form is because that is the only way to make us keep our gaze on Jesus while benefiting from his ministry. If the Holy Spirit reveals his personality, the nature of his training you will connect you too much to honor Jesus. And his assignment is to reveal the Christ. So his identity is concealed. So that you only look at the man, Jesus. Who is the express image of God. I teach you sound doctrine. Many, 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 many nonsense that believers are learning. I'm not being sarcastic. You know I teach from a heart of love. I tell you is the reason why many people cannot experience God. Is the reason why needless fears continue to come. Is the reason why pressures continue to mount. There is a formula to knowing God that we are not following well. We are just in number one. Apostasy. The first reason why things could be wrong. The shepherds themselves. There are shepherds that kill sheep. Do you know that the sisters of Moses' wife, if you read in the Bible right the wife of moses notice that it was shepherds that came to bully them by the well shepherds that should be taking care of sheep yet they were the ones who came to bully them and that that mystery still happens in the body of christ that shepherds come to threaten the bride of christ threaten the sheep apostasy all kinds of doctrines that came as a result of personalized dealings magnifications of emblems above christ oil maybe water whatever it is i'm not saying these things are wrong please i hope you understand that's why i said you see i i apologize before i started i told you this night's teaching is not really for a believer who just gave his life to christ because um if i don't clear this i'm going to shoot myself on the leg because of the second point that is coming Are we together this morning? It's very important for us to understand this. Preserve your personalized dealings. Only bring them out when you have established something from scripture and then it can be directly supported by your experience. That way it becomes edifying to the saints. I cannot build a series out of my experiences. If I describe to you now what happened when Jesus appeared to me, you'll be surprised how many other people Jesus has appeared to, that the similitude of the encounter will be different. I cannot build a doctrine out of it. Even if I write a book on it, I have to put a disclaimer that this represents my experience. It's an attempt to support the truth from scripture. A man who has never seen a vision of Jesus but can understand by the ministry of the Holy Spirit from Scripture will get a more accurate picture of Jesus. Even when Paul saw Jesus, he was still referred to back to be mentored correctly. Not even an encounter with Jesus will erode the need to be taught. The word himself went to the temple to learn about himself as a protocol. It's an ordinance. Imagine what Jesus was doing in the temple when he was reading about himself. Otherwise, we cannot be told to look up to Jesus. It's why we have invited demons into our lives. And these are the loopholes. This is why I'm teaching you this. Lest Satan should gain an advantage on us. These are the vantage systems in the kingdom. The loopholes that are left in our spiritual lives that the devil continues to enter. And when we are being prayed for to minister deliverance, the demons easily stroll out because they know that the level of spiritual eye it takes to close that loophole is not an average preacher that will have it. So they are, they are at liberty to go out anytime you drive them. And they continue to mock us. This is one of the mysteries behind the tragedy of repeated deliverances. That people are delivered now. And the devil, all he needs to do is manipulate any good thing in you. Kindness, love, compassion, and they are back in.
the most powerful form of deliverance is preached. To preach deliverance to the captives. More than conducting it. Because in the preaching of it, a doorway and a spiritual gateway is closed. Let's pray in the spirit for one minute. Shalabrandes kebarusi hasadash. Hallelujah. Thank you guys. God bless you. The second thing that could be wrong, let me just wrap it up quickly. The second thing that could be wrong is the quality of the spiritual information. Listen very carefully. The quality of the spiritual information you receive will form the fabric of your, the strength of your spirit man. The Bible lets us know in Genesis that God made many lights. Everybody say many lights. Many lights. Light is light. God made many lights. Are we together? And light in scripture is symbolic of many things. One, illumination. Are we together now? Two, the modus operandi of the kingdom. The system of operation. The animal kingdom has a dimension of God's light that coordinates their operation. I hope you know that. Yes. It's the reason why they too at their own level have some level of order. The plant kingdom have a level of light. Mankind has a level of light. That's why when a man acts depraved, God will refer him back to a lower dimension of his light to learn. When you are a lazy man, God will refer you back and say, go to the ants, you sluggard. When Nebuchadnezzar was proud, God turned him into a beast with the brain of a human being for seven years. At the end of it, Nebuchadnezzar raised a song, a verdict of worship to God. So there are many lights. Listen very carefully. The quality of the spiritual information you receive matters. Any light will not lift you. Please listen very carefully. The same way any drug will not cure you. I can't go to the pharmacist and say, okay, do you know what? Uh, I think my leg is paining me. What do you have there? And they say, just stretch your hand. Whatever you pick, is, is, it has nerve that number. Truly, it does. And there are drugs that if you are not sick and you take them, they will make you have that sickness before they treat you. Have you seen how this thing works? The quality of the spiritual information that we receive, it constructs not only our understanding, but it becomes the gateway for the Holy Spirit or demon spirits to access our lives. A mindset is a sustained thinking pattern. It can authorize darkness, can authorize light into your life. Now, when your mindset has been corrupted by a, a very inferior communication of light, demon spirits can come and build a fortification around it. That's what makes a mindset to become a stronghold. At that point, you can make even the word of God to be of non-effect. Praise the Lord. The quality of spiritual information. It is important. There's an information people have heard about spiritual growth that stops them from growing. There's an information people have heard about, about God that have made them to be afraid of God. There's something people have heard about the devil that have made them to trivialize the devil or exaggerate his operations. Are we together? It matters who tells you what. It matters who mentors you. Let me go to the third point very quickly. The third point is where I want to dwell a little. What could be wrong? Number three. I touched on it back at home yesterday before we left and I just felt a need to add it to our discussion today. The third and this for me is one of the major problems. I think in my opinion, even greater than apostasy and greater than the quality of spiritual information, this third point 
is a serious point. I call it the defined pattern or sequence of spiritual growth. Now listen very carefully. There is a sequence of spiritual growth that will make the saints to be mature. That means that the body of knowledge allocated for our growth requires a level of spiritual architecture to benefit us. You cannot have a random accumulation of light and truth and grow. No. There must be a sequential arrangement for it to profit you. Let me give you an instance. A believer should not get born again. And the first thing you are teaching him is relationship or prosperity. That is truth, but it's not sequentially arranged. You have not taught him how to tame the flesh. Now you are teaching him how to bring a lady. And he does not know what to do about his passions around her. Because the growth was not sequential. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many of us are victims of what I'm sharing now. It's true. Thank God for a church like this. It's dangerous to see a believer who just got born again. And you are teaching him about dimensions of financial prosperity. You are killing that person. Because the loss that comes with money requires a particular knowledge of God. To be able to make sense of it. Even God respected money. So that gentleman from born again, the next thing he handles money. And money begins to drive his entire life. And your mentorship cost it. What is happening right now, especially because we are a generation of enlightened people. All you need to go, do is go on Google. Go on YouTube. Are we together? All you need to do, I mean... There are thousands of sites streaming right now as I'm talking. Millions maybe all around the world streaming different thoughts. And many of them are true. But the problem is that believers have not been mentored that truths must be sequentially arranged. Like a building. It says we all like living stones are being built into a spiritual house. Ask any architect here. You don't sit down and just combine anything anyhow. A zinc does not come after the foundation. You build the superstructure. So a zinc is required. But the usefulness of a zinc is seen when you have made the building to lintel level. Our obsession for scarce information as a ladder to get fame within the Christian circle. We drive ourselves to get any revelation possible. Why? Because on the strength of those revelations, we seem to have some accreditation and honor within our prayer groups, within our churches. Chances are that if what you teach is very simple and basic, the obsession for knowledge in our generation will cause men to trivialize you. So that passion will make you to go online. You just look at a topic, Gabata. You say, that's right. This is really what I need. My members have been trivial. I'm not saying those things are wrong. I hope you get what I'm saying. I mean, you get that word, Gabata, and you are happy. What does it mean? A stone of judgment. And that becomes another series. There's nothing wrong with that. Except for the fact that most times we are so concerned about acceptance that we are not patient to understand the order and the sequence of spiritual growth. Notice how Jesus mentored the disciples. He started his mentorship by calling them. Then he started what we call the Beatitudes. He began to teach them sequentially. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. And then he began to teach them a lot of things. Notice the same sequence Paul takes in the book of Ephesians. When he begins to mentor believers, he starts by helping them understand their identity in Christ. The position of victory. Are we together? Then he now teaches them on the factors that make for a Christian character and lifestyle. Then he now shows them that you are not alone. This whole world lies in wickedness. So he mentors them on how to stay and how to be offensive. Sequence. There are people, the moment they get born again, the next lecture is a very drastic vision on Satan. Are we together? Now, that believer gets born again and boy, that description is bad. And all through the, the, the Christian experience of that believer, 
the entire focus is what do I do with this man, Satan? Let me tell you, if Satan is taken out of the world today, people's situation will only improve a little. I know there are many places today that Boko Haram did not bomb. Just some careless boys just bomb. But since it will be an addition to them, they will claim responsibility. And the people that bombed it are angry. You are not the one that bombed it. We are the ones that bombed it. But they claim responsibility because it will magnify the threat and the perception of them. That's how Satan is. Anything you are, when he shares credit, he comes there and says, what, what did I hear you say? I'm the one. Do not be ignorant of his devices. It's the word stratomai, his methodologies. He has his way of doing things. Satan is an opportunist. When he finds an opportunity for an applause, he's there to receive it quickly. Is God helping us? So there are many things we credit to the devil that the devil is shocked himself. Don't you know that Satan uses our experiences to learn too? Knowledge is not just in the realm of men. Angels learn from men. Satan learns from men. Man is God's highest creation. So all other civilizations depend on his operation to learn lessons. Is the reason why the gates of hell continue to transit too. There are many things now that were not recorded in the Bible except by prophecy because then hell had not transited to that level. The devil studies men to grow. This is the concept of what we know to be familiar spirits. That means spirits that are domiciled within a territory and their assignment is to study men within that territory for a long time and archive the loopholes in men. This becomes their system of advantage. That's why people from territories are associated with certain weaknesses. It's the study and the research of hell for many years. They have built a, an arsenal of victory from the weakness of man. When Jesus was fasting, Satan knows that when men are hungry, hunger always takes men to Egypt. Hunger. Nobody calls men to Egypt. When you want a man to go to Egypt, manipulate the economy and hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. So when Jesus was fasting, Satan was already sure he would beat him hands down. After 40 days, guess the first person he met. It's amazing that many times your prayer and fasting doesn't drive Satan. It invites himself. Jesus is done fasting and the first person who shows up is Satan. And he's not shaking under the anointing and falling. And Satan says, Jesus, so you mean you went this far? Alright, turn this stone to bread. And he studied Jesus. Because a normal man will be too hungry to not take advantage of that level of power. When a door is open before you and you refuse to go, it's a level of discipline that men do not have. Satan was testing the strength of, the, of, of his submission to the Holy Spirit and the first test was hunger. He was already full of the Holy Spirit and he could, he wanted to detach the flesh from the influence of the Spirit to see how powerful he was. Satan can test how much you are submitted to God. Not by asking you, are you submitted to God? He would do something to your flesh. And he knows that the Holy Spirit cannot sponsor certain reactions. So when your vulnerability reacts, it's already proof. It's a litmus test. A young man should not see a lady and not be, what's the word now, seduced? Aroused. Sorry to sound explicit. So if as a young man, you can look at a beautiful lady with two of your eyes, you are not praying. You are looking at her and nothing happens to you. Satan knows that your strength is being outsourced. It's outside you. Let me show you how Satan destroys men. I'm teaching many things this night. Satan, when he wants to destroy you, he will arrange a buffet of fleshly experiences according to the many flesh faculties of a man. And he will watch you. The menu you pick tells him which part of you has not submitted to Christ. 
This is what he was doing to Jesus. So the first test had to do with hunger. Is God speaking to us now? Individualism, hunger, turn this stone to bread. And he said, no, I've crossed that level. I'm that yielded to the Holy Spirit and not even my appetites can frustrate his workings. And Satan said, wow, I see you're a spiritual man. Let's go to test number two, your spiritual life. He took him to a holy city and dropped him at the pinnacle. And the assignment was fall from that height. Are you not a benefactor of God's grace? Fall, he will put his angels charge over you. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. The temptation of great men is to fall. That's how Satan tempts you. Because he says, God has made too much investment in you to allow people, to allow your fall destroy people. So it, he gives you the basis, the support systems to allow the flesh take advantage of you. He took him to a high, a holy city. The third test, when that failed, he took him to an exceeding high mountain and showed him the glories of the world and told him, all the people that occupy these mountains, I put them there. Just bow to me. Business is a transaction. The commodity of exchange, let it be your soul. And in reward, I will give you influence over the systems. I know your degree of maturity by your vulnerabilities. When Satan keeps a woman or a man and you turn and mind your business, he will never use it again. He will now think and say, what does this man want? Then he will look at your landlord and say, that's right. He would do something to your landlord to make him insult you in a way that you will say anything I get that can make money now. God, if you will not come and help me. He touches different aspects of your life and sees the reaction. Because any part that has been submitted to Christ, you cannot feel the impulses of Satan again. So when he touches you here and you are dead, he knows it's a waste of time. But he will usually find somewhere. The way you will react, you will say, I found it. He will stay there and invent a system of touching that aspect of your life. Are, are we together? There is a sequence for spiritual growth. All the truths you have now, let me tell you why many of us are not getting results from them. I will tell you why. Because although it is truth, it was not sequentially arranged. Let me use two or three people again. Gentlemen, please, can you come? All of you just stand facing this way. Just stand in front here. Look at this. I gave that example. Let me have one more person. We'll round up quickly. Am I boring you this morning? <laughs> Jesus. This is prosperity. This is what? Financial prosperity. A dimension. This is character and morality. This is science, wonders, ministry, destiny. This is relationship, marriage, and emotional entanglements. Now watch this. These are all dimensions of truth. Now, a believer is starting his work. Let me give you a Q&A. Can you arrange for me in your mind what is the sequence of mentorship? Dear mentor, I'm a member of your church. Can you help me and show me which I should start with first? No, don't answer. You may be wrong. Because your journey should start with relationship. You see, many of you have even missed it. Is it not a relationship with God that starts your journey? Are we together now? Now watch this. I'm joking with this, but it's a very serious thing. Because some of us, this is what you have. Your spirit man and your soul is full of great information that can transform you. There is hardly anything taught in church that is new to you. But the results refuse to reflect in your life. And that is frustrating you. It's easier 
to fail in ignorance because your awareness that you don't know helps to soothe even the pain of the failure but when you know that you have labored so much to accumulate all of the various faculties of knowledge and your life refuses to change you have witnesses around you who testify that you are serious with God they, they saw you at the book stand when you were buying all the books so they expect a result and they themselves are waiting for you for encouragement but after three years, they find out you are all the same. And they have body languages that remind you. that Don't you think of, reconsider this pain you are giving yourself. Herein is my father glorified. When ye bear much fruit. Now it is evil for me to expect someone who just got born again. To have all the results that are needed. There is a process. There is a progression. And Jesus grew. Men grow. But with time. And believe me, that time is not forever. There is a time allotted when certain evidences, everything may not square up in one day, but your life must begin to conform to an experience that demonstrates in experience that you have received the reality of God's life. The sequential arrangement of truth. Let me tell you without any bias and, and with all honor and respect as we round up, do you know why many preachers who come from the north are very powerful? Because the north has mastered the art of foundation. Now, they may ignore the ministry of the Holy Spirit. They may ignore all of this, but the foundational precepts. Are we together now? They will mentor you. So when you have the privilege of going through those backgrounds, many of us here who came from orthodox backgrounds, you see how stable your spiritual life is. Because although they did not teach you the Holy Spirit, although they did not show you certain things, sowing and reaping, that foundation of morality, that foundation of the fear of God became a very solid template. So when the Holy Ghost came, it was easy for him to continue because he met a formation that was already accurate. This is the one problem with charismatics. God is faithful. Are we together? But this is the one problem. The guy got born again and by next Saturday, he was a deacon. He was a what? It's not an insult, please. If you are a deacon here, don't worry. That's why God is helping you here and teaching you. And then while he was a deacon, because now the church needed expansion fast, and there was need for pastors. Are we together now? And because of the guy's loyalty, quickly he was ordained. Imagine the kind of ignorance that was ordained. Now, that guy has access to the minds of people at least six hours every week for 10 years. Whereas he himself has not started learning. And you are mandated to listen to him. As an act of your loyalty to God and the structure you are under. Here comes your destiny. At the mercy of someone who is yet to even understand what light is. So the guy continues to impart various versions of his ignorance. And you receive them sincerely. And you are worse than when you were before you came. Because before you started going to church, you were reading books. At least it was helping small. Now, because you submitted fully, your life started going down as a reflection of the ignorance of a man. No man can be trained enough to get into ministry, but there is an appreciable level. Are we together now? Paul, a man approved of God. Something about the teaching on finance was not sequentially arranged for you. Now, I hope you know I'm teaching apostolically. I'm not just talking about the baptizing church. Something about finance was taught. It was taught from the standpoint of lust. The lecture was not complete because the lecturer was not trained well. So the lecturer taught you the only part of the finance teaching was that you must, you must, you must be this, you must have this. If you cannot have this and you jump around admiring everything around anybody until the spirit of theft comes on you. 
See, let me teach you something. It's a law in the spirit. That's why I apologize. We are going to pray now. Watch this. Let me teach you how spirit things work. A few minutes and then I, I, God will help us. Eh? If I want the spirit of lust to come on me, for instance, I don't need to look for it. You remember you have your human will. Let me show you a scripture. Consistency is a voice in the spirit. I want to teach you something. That means when by an act of your will, you consistently do a thing. You begin to attract the spirit component of that dimension to come to you. Good or bad. That means that this guy wants to receive. Let me use something positive. God forbid, Lord. Say God forbid. Now, let me use something very positive. Let's, let's say prayer or revelation. This gentleman has been coming to this church and seen Pastor Dele minister accurately under the spirit of revelation. And he desires it. Are we together? There are many ways he can route it. One of the ways is that the more this guy continues to expose himself to the material of someone with that dimension, what happens is that that dimension in the Holy Ghost begins to be drawn to him. Consistency draws the spirit component of any dimension. So you, that means your consistency is a voice and is telling the spirit dimension, I am ready to be a slave to that dimension. Not in a negative way. Are we together now? He goes to pray every day and honestly, he knows that this prayer I'm struggling, this grace is not there. But he's doing it as unto God and sincerely because he believed a man who told him that prayer was part of the tools for victory in the kingdom. One day, as he keeps praying every day like that, one hour, maybe in a group, he's attracting the dimension of the Holy Ghost called the spirit of prayer and supplication. There is a dimension. He can quicken you into that realm. Are we, are we together now? So what happens is one day, he will just go behind one tree and just be praying. That's the night of the arrival of that dimension. His two hours will become a night vigil. From that day, he himself will not be able to manage the grace for prayer on his life again. Are we together? So every time you give, what are you doing? There is a dimension of the grace of God that you are attracting to yourself through that act. When you continue to do it, a day will come when that dimension of God's grace called the power to prosper, the giving grace, the grace that abounds, making sure that you have all sufficiency, that grace will come upon you. That is the day you will start having testimonies that people will think you are lying. The same way you can steal as an act of your will. It's not the devil. Remember, Satan is one. There are not many of him. The devil as a person, he has arsenals, but he's one. And I assure you, you have not hurt him enough for him to disturb you. There are more people on earth who have caused him more headache that is disturbing now. So most times when we say Satan, it's not true. Do you know what it takes to be attacked by Satan? You must, you must do something for the kingdom that is striking. I mean, look at them. Okay, well, Billy Graham is gone. But there are people who have won souls too much. You just started now. Why will he just leave all those people and come and worry you? <laughs> Satan left the whole earth when Jesus came and was waiting for Jesus to finish fasting. That means if you were in Jesus' generation, I said, Satan, you are this. Yeah, mm, I'm waiting here. I know the person I'm seeking. He uses a system to operate. Are we together this morning? And so this brother can steal because of the lust of your eyes. It is not a spirit. But the moment you stole, the spirit of theft felt something that was drawn to you. But it was not enough to bring in. Consistency is a law. It's a voice. When you steal again, and you steal again, and you see the benefit of stealing, and then you steal again. You continue to draw that spirit. A day will come you will not steal by your ability again. 
you will still buy the spirit and that spirit will start working in you the same way it works in a prophet no matter where they hide that money have you seen people like that hide the money under the carpet they will just stand and leave the carpet they themselves don't know what influence they are under some of us, our children here are giving us headaches. We don't know how it started. They continue to watch movies. They continue to watch films. And while you thought they were watching entertainment, there was a spiritual reaction. The spirit does not know whether it's movie or not. Anywhere your attention is drawn to it will come. You become what you behold. You kept beholding. You kept beholding. And the spirit starts saying, someone is calling me. There is someone calling me in this family. And you kept calling, Maranatha, come, come. And one day, that spirit will come. The guy will steal his office. He will steal your, sal your salary. You will put 16 words, your password, complicated words. You will look at it like this. One, five, star, hash. Now, he does not, it's the same way a prophet operates. Now, I'm telling you this. You will come back and see his stolen money and you will ask him, this is him, this is the police. Young man, what did you do? And he's standing in ignorance. He has become a slave to a dimension. The same way you can be so yielded to the Holy Spirit that sometimes you will be joking, yet you don't know you are prophesying. You are, you are that yielded. Listen, the goal of the Holy Spirit is not to keep talking to you every day. No, the language of God is light. Listen very carefully. God does not have to talk to speak. Understand this. The speakings of God is not always with words. And the spirit drove Jesus. The speaking is to acclimatize you to his methodologies. You get to a point where you are immersed in his person. Where he does not need to tell you. He moves you. Your body has been submitted through your consistency with him. So you can just stand and feel like you need to go to that shop and move and just see an accident happen. He didn't need to tell you an accident will happen. You have been so yielded. He moves you into his will. This is the level in your work with God where your coincidences become miracles because they are not coincidences. They are impulses of the spirit. You will walk to a shop and you start feeling unusually thirsty. You are on your way home. You are about to meet your wife testy for no reason and you look at a shop and you just stand there and say do you have malt and you just see a lady praying in tongues inside the shop ah, what am i doing here i came to buy uh, water and you look at her and the spirit of the living god huh who the spirit of the living god suddenly you will see that lady and you will snap that lady in your heart he will wait for you in the night when you are going to pray. The moment you go to pray, Shabras Kali Baradash, Lord, my destiny, open the gates, heal the sick. You will be surprised that night that while you are praying, God will suspend your passion for every other thing. And the moment you are praying, you will see yourself by that shop again. You will see that lady. You will start hearing the sound of children. Lord, what are you saying? I rest my case. Let me not. Let me not. There are people who always enter trouble. Do you know why? It's not their fault. Anything bad that is happening, if you hear that they've arrested five people, you can bet that they are there. They are not thieves, but they are always getting into trouble. They have submitted themselves, sometimes through the weakness of the flesh, to the impulses of the destruction that wasted by noonday. The moment police wants to catch people that are smoking anything, you are minding your business in your bedroom. That's how you will get up. It's not like the devil is saying, let's go. 
you will just go out, you are strolling, and that day, you won't comb your hair, you wear three quarter, just, you will have the appearance of a criminal. Let me tell you this, while you are laughing, take seriously what I'm saying. This is how many people continue to get into trouble. Continue to get into trouble. The weakness of the flesh. Because truths were not sequentially arranged to ensure that you are built. It's time. Has someone learned something today? Let me tell you this. I can tell you why although you are a leader in your church or a cell group, certain acts of the flesh continue to kill you. Sometimes it may be that certain trainings were not inculcated. In your spiritual upbringing, you were taught, you were taught to trivialize the character of the spirit morality and excellence and the reality there is a difference between holiness and uprightness holiness is a nature uprightness is the outworkings of righteousness it's not a gift it's the advantage you take with that grace called holiness so when you are not taught you generically just believe holiness is a nature and it doesn't matter and now you don't know how to explain the passions in your body. You have not been taught that you die daily. That it is when death walks in you that life will walk in others. You can pretend it for a while. But the day comes your wife will come and catch you watching pornography. Pastor, I'm not the only one. I've, I've spoken with other people too. We're all like that. Now, when a member who is growing, sees you like that. The member is convinced that what he or she is doing does not have a remedy. You are not God, but you are his representative. So there is a level of, of um, there is a standard that is required. And you don't have the grace for it. So the grace is supplied. But you must know how to engage it. Are we together? What could be wrong? What could be wrong with your prayer life? What could be wrong with your word life? What could be wrong with your passion for evangelism? You were told that if you are not an evangelist, you don't win souls. Winning souls is something that happens after a revival meeting and you emotionally roam around the street for two weeks. And then after that, you are back. What could be wrong? Can we pray? Hold the hands of someone while you are seated. And let's pray. There is a generation that God is raising. Please pray. Pray in the spirit. We are rounding up for this morning. Pray. Praise the bread of life, that glorious spring that washes our sins away. Praise the bread of life, Emmanuel, God with us, the one who saves. Praise the cup of life, that glorious spring that washes our sins. Away, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. King of Kings, Lord of Lords, pray, faithful and true. Lamb of God. 
We need to pray and say, Lord, rearrange my life again. The random practice of spiritual truth is responsible for the limitation in my destiny. Set the ordinances of the spirit sequentially in my life so that my life can produce results. The things I've exaggerated, bring them to order. The things that should be an emphasis that have trivialized, stretch them to the boundary of their relevance. Shabarakatos. Just a few minutes and we are done. Lord, I love you, but I was never taught the relevance of a prayer life. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Many of us were taught prayer as a system of getting things. The primary assignment of prayer that many of us have been mentored into thinking is that it is a system of getting things. So the moment you want to pray, you are thinking of getting things. For others, you have been taught that prayer is warfare. So the moment you want to pray, you are just thinking demons. The primary assignment of prayer is to change you. Jesus prayed and the fashion of his countenance changed. When the grace for prayer comes, it's not for warfare. When the grace for prayer comes, it's not for receiving things. It's a system allocated for the edification of the saints. That a man can pray until you molt like a snake. Come out of your old fashion into the new you. You can pray in two realms, pray in two anointings, pray in two dimensions. Not to fight demons. A man can go to the secret place, a weak man, and leave that place with fire. Please pray. Let's give ourselves two minutes to pray. Please pray, pray, pray. Ela barakatos kalibas, empratos kela tatusi anahasa. Remember, I told you consistency. Don't say apostle, I don't have the grace for prayer. Keep praying. Pray your way into that realm. Holy fire, burn upon my altar. From within me, spirit to take over. Holy fire burn upon my own. Hey. Holy fire burn upon my altar. From within me, spirit to take over. Fire burn upon my own. For more online messages, check us out at www.soundcloud.com forward slash TVC Mainland. You reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign, you 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit just reminded me of the second thing I was to say. Please listen. Listen, we'll sit down shortly. Two things I said, and while we were singing, the Holy Spirit just reminded me. Remember, the Bible says He will bring to your remembrance. Hallelujah. The second thing I wanted to talk about is. Very briefly, let me show you how God transforms men in this kingdom. Transformation is difficult without a reference. I'm just buttressing on what Pastor Dele shared. You cannot become nothing. You cannot change into nothing. There has to be a reference. And the way God does it, please listen very carefully, is that aside from his word, that is a compendium of his methodology. Are we together now? Men are changed when they behold men, not just words. Are we together now? So what happens is that God in his system, when he's training you, he will personify what he wants you to be in a person and recommend that you understudy that person. So in God's economy, every dimension he wants to reveal, there is a person. To represent it. So when he wants to show you what it means to be blessed in the kingdom, Isaiah 51 says, look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that body, for I called him and blessed him and increased him. Are we together now? Yes. When you want to see how to manipulate difficult challenges and thrive, they recommend Isaac to study what happened that Isaac sowed in a land. And reap that same year. If you desire an encounter with God, the personality that represents the office of encounter in the Bible is Jacob. Are we together? This is the generation of them that seek thy face. Oh, it's not Jacob, it's God of Jacob. The God of Abraham is not the God of Isaac, it's not the God of Jacob. He is God, but all those dimensions are revelations of different parts of him. What the God of Abraham will give you, the God of Jacob will not give you. No. When you want to know God, he refers you to Jacob. So you have to journey from chapter 28 of Genesis. The first encounter where he missed it and he got up. So in case you are backsliding and you want to return back, there is hope for you because Jacob missed that encounter. So you find out what he did first. Between the first encounter and the second was the encounter in the house of Laban. There was a level of innocence that Jacob had that did not allow him to know God. So he passed through the house of Laban. And by the time we get to chapter 32, he was ready. He dismissed his wives and his cattle and all of that. And then a man came to him and he held him. He said, this time I won't miss it. I will not let you go. And then you see how God blesses people, that he blesses people by changing their names. So you find out. When 
you want to understand how to use the ministry of prayer and the prophetic to legislate God's counsel over a territory. The personality that is referred, you are referred to is Elijah. James chapter 5. Are we together? Don't, don't go there. I'm just answering the second question. We'll touch a bit on it, I hope. So, the Bible takes us and organizes those men. The Bible calls them elders. And he tells us they obtained a good report. So, you now begin to study them. Through faith, Abel offered. There is a kind of offering that would take faith. So, when that happens, don't be afraid. Understudy Abel. How he offered a more excellent sacrifice that got to heaven. So if your offering is not bringing returns, go back to Abel. What did Abel do? Because Abel and Cain is a contrast of two givers. And one did not get results. So if your giving life is faulty, there is a personality. Help us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes by your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Conferences like this are feasts of mysteries. It's amazing how Jesus made his disciples to become apostles. He spent time teaching them. Every day, every time. Even when he was on the cross, he knew he had not finished the lecture. As soon as he resurrected, they saw him say, there's no time to celebrate me. Let's get to the lecture quickly. I have 40 more days with you and I need to teach you before the Holy Spirit comes. And Acts chapter 1, he spent 40 days teaching them on the matters of the kingdom. After that, he said, fine, you can go. I'm done with you. It is the word of God that not only purifies but enlightens. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want to just continue from where we left off and where I believe that God has been building all through this conference. We are dealing with the matters of revival. We are dealing with the matters of the move of God. Please don't forget, we are dealing with the matters of destiny as far as the program of God is concerned. You will study from scripture and history that many things that were captured in this Bible, um, when you study history, you will know that many other activities on earth were happening concurrently when certain events here were happening. But they didn't have the privilege of getting into this book because they had no attachment to the will of God. Everything that found its way in this book got there because there was a connection between that event and the will of God. So you would notice that the Bible will talk about an entire book as though only one man existed. Because that was the only person who played a role that was in sync with God's program. Many other things were happening. So if our children would write about these days, they will not write about someone selling food outside necessarily. They will say, and there was a conference. And so, so, so men of God were ministering. And you would think that that's all that was happening in Lagos. Yet there is a lot happening. I was coming down from the lift and we, we made a mistake and I just stepped into a wedding. I, I just turned and I said, no, 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 this is, not, this is not for me this night. I'm not invited. I refuse to be invited. I have a program. So there's someone is happy now. He just got a wife today. And if you are to record the move of God in 2019 in Lagos, you'll be surprised that God is only interested in how that wedding will produce his agenda. If he cannot find a place in that wedding, it is not worthy of capture into his program. Everything you see in the Bible, it is with respect to how it plays a role. That means ministry. If you're a man of God here, let me define ministry for you. Ministry is whatever comes out of you in honor and in support of God's program. Your pregnancy can become ministry if that child will be a prophet to the nations. So your assignment and your ministry can be to give birth. 
What was Mary's assignment? Your assignment can be to make money. Now, but this time around, it will not just be maybe, you know, you are just trying to... Ink. No, 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 no. You have found a place that you are in the similitude of Joseph of Arimathea and that your wealth has a role to play. The body of the son of the living God was hanging on the cross. No prayer warrior could bring it down. It took a man of wealth and influence called Joseph of Arimathea to bring that body down. So God can make you a Joseph of Arimathea. That means if you sit down and you are just reading books and you are not making money, you are defaulting against your destiny with respect to your assignment. And if you make money and you make it small, you are still defaulting. Because the nature of your assignment has a threshold. Remember, this is not, for you, it's not luxury. It's a ministry. So you are not at liberty to say, I'm, I have enough. No. Until the one who sent you said, this is enough. The same way a man of God cannot say, I know so much, I won't grow. It's a ministry. In ministry, when you move, only God says stop. When it does not say stop, you don't stop even when there are mountains. His voice is the regulator of the journey. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So tonight, I want us to just delve a little into revival. One of the, one of the ways that I've adopted as I teach believers is to be able to show you the applicability of a revelation. I believe that the edge in getting truth is to know how to apply it in your life. The mere exegesis of the information, as exciting as it can be, does not leave you at an advantage. There must be the point of application. Are we together now? Yes. So as I teach, I have in mind that the mysteries of the kingdom are useless if they just come as information. The applicability of those truths must be given to you. That's where your edge is in that knowledge. So I'm not only, I'm not only concerned or excited about the unveiling of mysteries. We need to be able to connect those mysteries to the context of our civilization and how you can walk out tonight holding that truth. If we don't achieve that, we may clap for ourselves for getting so deep, but the truth is that we are not going to have any results. It's very painful how powerful meetings end without transformation. It's very painful how in one or two weeks, many people forget. It doesn't matter how they cry during the meeting. Think of how many meetings you've been in your life. Think of the last one that you believe that no other meeting can be greater than that. And you've even forgotten who he preached, not even to talk of what was said. There is a psychology in mentorship. It's not only spirituality. You have to understand man, not just as a spirit. You must understand the psychological component and how men receive truth. Are we together? Yes. It is part of the requirements to be an effective minister. A minister is first a communicator. It is the information he communicates that makes him superior. That means that while... You, you lean on the strength of the Holy Spirit and the strength of the quality of your information. You must be fair enough to your listeners to go so far to understand how humans learn. Are we together? These are some of the auxiliary systems that help men of God to be very effective so that we don't waste our time dispensing truths that are not translated with a level of mastery that can cause the hearers to hear. The name of what I just defined for you is what the Bible calls utterance. There is a difference between utterance and oratory. Oratory is the ability to communicate words intelligently, grammatically, linguistically. But utterance, or oratory now, utterance is the ability to translate spiritual truth 
Are we together? And minister it in a way and manner that regardless of the spiritual level and regardless of the intellectual level, there is a system of getting that truth into you. It's a grace. It's called utterance. Hallelujah. Ordinances of revival. That's my topic tonight. Ordinances of revival. Hmm. Tonight's teaching will truly set you on fire. And it will help us to not only be spiritual, but to ensure that our territories... You see, kingdom advance is territorial. You are not free if you are the only one who is changed. The value system of the kingdom must translate from you and be reflected within your territory. So even our assignment is territorial. Are we together now? We have to graduate from the realm of individual transformation as good as it is. The systems and the structures will never come to the obedience of Christ when the transformation remains within us. There has to be a system of extending it. This is where I think there is a lot of problem when we teach on revival, the move of God. We isolate the environment, the cosmos, and act as though it should not be involved in the process. It's a waste of time when your territory does not subscribe to your values. Praise the Lord. Ordinances of revival. Hmm. I can see with the eyes of the Spirit and I hear the sound of an army rising and I know they're rising in their thousands they're coming from afar they're coming from afar. Hey, 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 Tonight is a kingdom anthem, like we have a national anthem. Young ancients, young ancients arise. Young ancients, young ancients move forward. Young ancients, the spirit of the Lord's with you. The power of Yeshua goes with you wherever you go. Oh, 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 Hallelujah. Tonight I'm ministering, please sit down, in the spirit of Elijah. Elijah is not a man. Elijah is a spiritual system that foreruns the move of God. The first manifestation of Elijah was in Noah. Praise the Lord. It is an ordinance that before the Lord comes, Elijah must forerun him. There was a personality who carried that office called Elijah. But Elijah is not a man. Just like Jezebel is not a man. There are systems. 
is only that systems enter time by entering men. So all that you see in the Bible is a continuation of the same story using different actors through different dispensations. Every time you see the move of God about to come, watch out for Elijah. Elijah is a manifestation of the prophetic and the apostolic. And the assignment of Elijah is to bring back the ordinances of God. Are we together now? When the ordinances of God are put in place, then the Lord can come. So when it was time for the prophets of Baal to be judged, Elijah the Tishbite shows up. Are we together now? And then Malachi tells us before the great and the terrible day of the Lord, Elijah will come. It's an ordinance. Are we together now? Yes. So when Jesus was about to come, Elijah comes again in the person we call John the Baptist. Did the Bible not say he came in the spirit and power of Elijah? John the Baptist came to forerun him because it is an ordinance. Please just follow me tonight. The same way, listen very carefully. When Jesus came and Elijah came, Jezebel had to find a way to also be represented. And she was represented in a small lady who married a king and the same way she vowed to remove the head of Elijah she removed the head of John like she promised hallelujah so what you see on earth are not just bodies they are continuation of a story Are we together? Please write this down. An ordinance is a precept. An ordinance is an accredited methodology. An ordinance is a precept. An ordinance is an accredited methodology. An ordinance is an, is an authorized approach. So when we say the ordinances of revival, we are talking about the systems that have been allocated by which individuals, families, and territories can activate and preserve the move of God within the lifetime of a dispensation. You have to know this. If this is not discussed, we failed in this conference. You have to talk about the subject of revival. Here and there, We've read books about the moves of God. Let, let, me, let me talk for five minutes about the move of God. There are two dimensions of the move of God. We're discussing revival tonight. Are we still together? The first dimension of the move of God is called the cyclical move of God. From the word circle, the cyclical move of God. That means... These moves have similarity. There is a repeatability in their operation. Are we together now? It is these kinds of moves that you will need a father figure for. Because you can take the advantage of history and age plays a lot here. The cyclical move of God. Moving again as he did before. So when you meet a man that has done business with God for many years, he can read the writings on the wall and tell you, I know this move. When I was 17 years, this was how the formation of the revival started. And now I see that same formation. So he can guide you. An example of such a move and such an advantage was Eli and Samuel. Although the eyes of Eli was becoming dim, which is a dangerous state spiritually, but he still had an advantage of the understanding this move. The moment he saw a young boy coming and said, sir, you called me. It's amazing that God used the voice of Eli to call Samuel. He didn't say, I had the voice of him. I came to you. It was the sound of your voice God used. 
And when he came the second time, Eli said, ah, this is familiar. I know this. The next time he calls, say, speak, Lord. Because until you respond, he cannot continue. I, he will not violate your will. Remember that God lures men. Oh dear, help me Holy Spirit. I don't want to delve and talk about so many things now. The way God lures men into dimensions, you see, is to come to you. He knows your spiritual hunger and appetite. So he will manifest something about him that reflects your hunger and hide it back. The moment that happens, it will draw you to want to find out. So as a man of God, you are trusting God for a prophetic grace, for instance. Now, you will come for a meeting and it's like it will be hazy. You will be hearing Janet. And say, ah, should I embarrass myself or not? Who is Janet? I'm the one. Are you five? In your f you are five. You see, you are happy. And then the next meeting, you will try it again and it will not work. It is not backsliding. He's luring you. Dimensions in the spirit cannot only be believed, they can be tasted. Oh, taste and see. I've always used this example. Let me use it again. I come from the north and I, many of you have them here, right? That these people that sell meat. Yes. They never allow you to buy it. They allow you to taste it first. Because they know that the awareness of what is in your pocket will, 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 will shortchange their desire to extract more money from you. They know how to manipulate what is in your pocket. So they'll say, don't worry, there's no pressure. You can even go if you want to. They will dare you. And so you plan to spend 1,000 naira and your wife is standing there with you. And then they just, you taste one, ah, what of this one? This one is like it has too much fat. They will bring out another one and say, There's this one doesn't have fat. You end up spending 5,000 naira there on plan for. When God is about to call Moses, Moses sees a bush burning but not consumed. And the, the bush continued there. It was God luring him. He said, I will turn aside. And see this great sight. The moment he turned aside, he said, finally, I've got it. That's all. The moral for all this was to get your attention. Let me tell you this. It is hard to get man's attention. The distraction that is upon mankind cannot allow us to focus on God and understand. God is very excited when he finally gets man's attention. He doesn't hide it. You see his excitement. That's why when God is trying to use a man and you come to distract that man, God will say, you don't know what I went through to get this guy to now pay attention. You better not be a distraction. There are many skills that the Spirit of God can employ to get men's attention. He can relocate men. He can go as far as making you lose your job. And it doesn't matter in his economy because restoration is still possible. So it's only you that knows you are at a loss. In the economy of God, it doesn't make any difference. Because six months later, you can be back to what you would have been. So you are the only one who is feeling it as a loss. But I mean, the realm of the spirit is looking at you and saying, what is this guy saying? So God can be at liberty and comfortable to let you lose your job. Because you think that if that job does not come, the salary of five months and God is saying, look, there are weightier matters. This is not the issue of the job. It's the reason why when you are scared and pray some prayers, God just overlooks it and says, let's deal with the major issues. There is already a provision to tell you sorry later. Hallelujah. You really have to pray for me this night because I can't even remember how I got to where. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we have the cyclical move of God. Are we together now? Yes. If a campus now, campus presidents here, 
you can come and meet Pastor Dele and say, we are seeing a formation in our campus. Something is beginning to happen. People are just shouting under the anointing in the hostel. And on the strength of the experience of having passed through that move, everybody who was involved in any campus move of God will smile and say, we know these writings. We know what it means. A young guy will just come and tell you, as soon as I finish lecture, something keeps driving me to the bush. You laugh. You say, I can interpret it. That one is easy. Mene, mene, tekel, ufes. No, that one, I've been trained. It's not word of knowledge. An experience. There is something about the bush and God building people. The bush doesn't have to burn. You just go there. Because it can get your attention. Are we together now? So you can advise the people. Now, but listen. But there are certain moves of God. The second dimension of the move of God. It is not cyclical. No one has seen it. These are moves that are prophetic. For instance, the coming revival that is coming that we are prophesying is in the similitude of this move. There is no man that can give a clue about it. The character of the revival left even our fathers with thoughts. They said we stretch our eyes. We don't know. We just know that something will happen. You have to trust God real time. The only spirit of God or the only spirit that can help and guide men is the Holy Spirit. That's the kind of move where both the young and old will have to stand helpless. Waiting for God to define the terms of that move. So it says, blow the trumpet in Zion. It says, sound the alarm upon my holy mountain. Then it begins to describe the formation of this army. Not every move of God can be predicted. It will not be like before. This is where the limitation of knowing the God of yesterday comes. Because the last move of God always fights the next move of God. Just because God is doing something now, the way he, or the way, just because God is not doing something now, the way he did it 10 years ago, does not mean he's not the one doing it. This is the trouble with boxing God to a cyclical move alone. When you study God's generals, many of you have studied God's generals, all right? There was this man, let me, let me, since we're discussing revival, let's honor, we have to, it's like a manual. This is a textbook on revival. You are not a serious student of revival if you don't know the book or have not read the book or don't have it. You have to ask God and those men for forgiveness because they are still alive. The labors of our heroes past shall not be in vain. So you have to at least honor them. Are we together now? So, there was a man called Alexander Towe. Now, those days, you didn't have internet and you didn't have phones. So if I were in Zaria here, I would not know that God was moving in Lagos. So it would be safe to assume I'm the only one who is capturing these dimensions of God. Are you, are you getting the problem now? Alexander Doway was a mighty, mighty, mighty man of God. People say they are evangelists. He was not an evangelist. Praise the Lord. He became the spiritual mayor of Illinois. It was him that built Zion City as an attempt to conquer the cosmos. He didn't get the blueprint properly. But at least it was an attempt. He was the first person to start what we now do, our fathers do, like campgrounds, and to have a place like this. It was Alexander the Way. Are we together now? Where you have a territory that is secluded with hospitals and this that reflects the value system of heaven. The Way was so powerful that he mentored the mayors and he mentored all of these people. He came to a time where every time people read the Bible, the man they saw was the way. And they said, Alexander, the way you are Elijah. For a while he said, no, 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 how can I be Elijah? But one day, he thought about it and said, ah, it may be true that I'm Elijah. And by the next week, the way was in a priestly regalia. Are we together now? 
Now, that's not even where I'm going to. Later on, when his ministry was about coming to an end, people came from another region and rumored a strange move that had started. This is what I want to communicate to you. And they said that move was headed by a woman huh, called Maria Woodward Eater. Now listen very carefully. That this woman, number one, that she was a woman. Two, she was uneducated. Number three, she did not, I mean, this guy said, because the, the nature of his teaching captured God and said, I am the reference of anything God. It's a dangerous lesson. So Alexander Way started hearing and tried to find out more. What was the nature of this move? It was Maria Woodward Eater that introduced something that we call presence evangelism. That means that people are slain under the power, but not like it happens to us now. It was a strange phenomenon because they would not only fall, they would freeze as though dead in that position for many hours. I remember those days when God started with us on campus. It was like that. People would just lie down as though dead for hours. And you who is the prayer warrior that initiated that trouble, you keep praying that they wake up. Because if for any reason, they don't wake up. While it is true, you are anointed, you have a situation you must manage intelligently. You are building that person, but they have parents. Are we together? Now watch this. When Alexander Doe heard what God was doing with Maria Woodward Eater, he was not even patient to study it. He compared the move with his experience. And when he saw that there was a significant difference, he said, number one, this woman was of the devil. Her operation was of the devil. And he used his credibility to try to discourage her. So here and there, people who came from Doe's meetings, to her meetings. They were not there to receive. They were there to cause a lot of trouble. And they manipulate people including the first husband Woodward. Who made life very difficult for her. It was while Woodward frustrated her to a point that while she will be preaching, he will be having an affair with one lady. Eventually Woodward died and she was the one who conducted his funeral. And then a few years later she married the man they call Ita who now was her second husband, who was a great support and helped her. Are we together now? Yes. So we see that a man was fighting the move of God. And when you study down through history, what we call denominations, now I'm not, I'm not, I'm not um, talking against any denomination, but almost every denomination, mainstream denomination, was a persecuted version of the previous denomination. You have to be students of history if you want to study the move of God. Now, a generation is full of very proud people who just believe they are in ministry, they are in this, and they would not sit down to learn. The persecuted version of different ministries is what kept bringing forth certain ministries. And the factor responsible for the persecution was an introduction to a new dimension of God. Every time a new dimension of God was introduced that was not captured in the prior move, they fought it. Please, you have to understand this because this revival we are shouting about is going to come with side effects. And you must be trained to understand the side effect. It will not be the way it has been. Many people will call what is of God the devils because it does not conform to the mold of religion. Because it does not conform to the mold of certain things. Once upon a time, if someone fell under the anointing, you will call a doctor. You don't say, oh, praise Jesus, he's growing. No. It took time and those who pioneered that dimension suffered a great deal. They were persecuted. They turned them into all kinds of things. The move of God on campus today is now received but those who God started using they suffered though. 
They were blackmailed. They were told to be destroying people, destroying students, not helping people study. Look, let me, there is a price to host the move of God. There is a level of stamina you must sustain to host God. The weight of God is very heavy. You have to be strong to be able to carry him. Are we together now? So I want to be able to share with us a few keys from scripture and from my experience as a student of revival. I submit to you by the spirit of the living God that God has helped me to study revival and I've had the privilege to meet a few people who met the generals and to converse with them. What did they tell you? I've spent my life like a spiritual archaeologist because I found out it's part of the responsibility of the apostolic ministry. You have to know what God did before. It's not a name and it's not a title. It's a burden and a responsibility. You must be able to educate a generation and say, this is how we know God to be. But now let's watch. Even me, I'm not sure, but at least I can guide you. Because his move is coming. In 2005, I had a vision, Pastor. In that vision, I started seeing the move of God that was going to come to China. I was in a vision of the Lord and then I saw young Chinese children. Listen very carefully. I saw young Chinese children and it was like fire just came on one. And then the fire moved to one. Then it moved to one. Then it moved to one. And then it became an inferno that could not be quenched. And the spirit of the Lord told me he was taking the move of God to China. Then the spirit of the Lord began to teach me about the move of God that was in Europe. Please listen very carefully. Europe is really supposed to be the center of Christianity. There is a spiritual heritage that is domiciled within that land that was corrupted by secularism. Till today you go to Europe, you will see it. You are a Christian, it's as if you are holding typewriter. Are we together now? The system was designed to make you feel foolish for knowing and loving God. And God has a way he preserves a move. When he finds out that that move is shrinking, he will transport that move to a region and hide it for safety. Watch this. The move of God is like Olympic fire. It must not die. Are we together now? So when he finds out that there are careless people who are left around that move, he will find a way of shifting that move to a zone of safety. Awaiting a time when he will find a ready people. Please understand what I'm telling you. These are deep discussions on revival. We're only joking if we don't know these truths. Hmm. Hallelujah. Then the move of God went to America, pastor. And the way it was very powerful because it was an environment that was conducive for God. The founding fathers already made the environment. That means that the founding fathers territorially allowed the purposes of God to be established. Are we together now? Territorially, they represented the people there and they said, Maranatha, God, we allow you to come. So the spirit of God on legal grounds could come and establish a lot of things. Then came all these moves. Now, let me tell you where the problem was. The move of God that happened in the 40s, the 50s, and even the early 60s, it was corrupted because those who carried that fire did not have a system of balance. So Satan invented a formula that he used when Moses was negotiating the exodus of Egypt. Leave your wives and your children behind. So the evangelists were in the field preaching and they never had the time to raise another generation. And Satan saw that I can't, this man already loves God, but sliding is not, it won't happen. So he said, I leave you. I will come and grow with your child. John G. Lake, who was an evangelist in Spokane, and then he was also in South Africa for many years. When John G. Lake's wife was about to die, he was in the field and his daughter made a comment, sir. He said, if daddy were here, mommy would not die. The idea they had about kingdom advance was the fact that even if my family dies, let it die. 
I want to show you the sacrifice that brought us to where we are today. They are not bad people. They were limited by the light that was available then. Praise the Lord. They asked Billy Graham's wife. They said, the way this man would not be with you, sometimes he could be with his wife seven times in a year. How many times? Ladies, attention, seven times in a year. Mark that man, score him over 100. So they asked her, how did you endure? Listen, how did you survive? She said there were times she felt like dying. But she would not divorce him. That was a price. Now watch this. When, when all these things started happening, Satan knew that these fathers, he knew that there was one thing common to men. Time. The limitation of time. One day these guys will die and they will join the cloud of witnesses. So he said, instead of us trying to convince them to backslide, that's too much energy. Let's go back to their children and grow with them. And they began to manipulate a philosophy and an ideology, a value system that made it unattractive to be a serious Christian. Those children of yesterday are those who sit in government today. You transform a generation by growing with them. Not interrupting them when they are growing. Listen, as anointed as God has helped me to be, if I go to redemption camp right now and I meet all our fathers and our mothers, even if I remove a head and put it back, they will be impressed and say, wow, you are very anointed. I'm on my way to go and listen to Papa Deboe, please. I will talk to you later on. I said, come, I have a Greek and he says, do you know why? Because Papa Ia Deboye was the face of God that grew with that generation. And David served his generation. It's not enough to serve God. You must serve God within the context of a generation. You must know the age range your grace was allocated to. Otherwise you are in for a big shock. Any man of God who cannot define the age range of your impact, you have lost a generation already. And you must pay the laborious price of growing with that generation. You will not show up when they are on the throne and say, I, I'm a man of God. You have no place in their life. Your impact must be enshrined as you grow with them. So I tell you the mistake most of us are making right now. Let's just correct it. You are ashamed of being a minister over young people because they are financially incapable. And you want to gather people who are 60 years plus who will be dying in the next 10 to 20 years while the generation is searching for the face. I told you God uses men to personify moves. What is your face representing to a generation? Today in the generation of our fathers, when you talk of deliverance and the rest, the face of Dr. Olukoya, when you talk about all of these men, they must have replacements because they will not be there forever. And right now, the formation of the next move has started. But ignorant and hungry people are ignoring the next move to try to manage the last move. Please sit down. When we started those days, people looked at us and said, oh, all these guys are just young boys with fellowship. You see, that's the problem. The fellowship people are now the CEOs you are talking about, sir. And let me tell you something with a generation. A generation, men and Africans are loyal to the face that raised them. They will never fall. If you were not there when they were suffering and drinking Gary, don't you think you will show up one day and just say, I'm starting a ministry. They look at you and say, where is the history? Impact is historical. Where is, bring the archive. Show me where you played a role in helping this generation transit. It's a gift to be planted in the future now. But only those with the eyes of the spirit will need to see. Hmm. I love my parents. They listen to my messages. I'm very sure they just listen for the purpose of loyalty and solidarity to a spiritual son. I mean, how many mysteries am I going to teach my father now? 
Where is he going to start from? Mystery of what? Is it, is it to a dance? Where, where, I mean, what, what is he going to start from? The dance that will later cause him to collapse and bring more trouble for me. Is it not better that he just stays the way he is? Let me keep taking care of him as he counts his days with honor. Now, let me teach you something. Look up, please. Look up. I'm saying many things tonight, but I'm, I'll soon start showing us the precept. But I want to show you something. Listen. Do you know that a man who answers the call of God at age 50 or 60, God is going to route a system of jumping many things in his training and remedy them. So when that man is teaching and mentoring younger people, he will ignore certain things. It was ignored in his life as an advantage to help his age. But a young man should not jump what he's jumping. You can't teach a man of 75 years avoid fornication. His age has already helped him avoid fornication. Are we together now? Or thou shalt not steal. I mean, where is the energy? When it takes him a long time to even hold the mic and start talking. It takes energy to do all these things. And now that guy does not have that strength again. But when a young gentleman watches that man and also decides to jump like that. Then he's going to have a very serious problem. It is true that a revival is coming. One more vision and then we'll teach. The Lord opened my eyes a few years ago and the Lord began to show me the move of God that would come in Nigeria and in Africa. And then because the move of God will always assume the formation of king, priest and prophet. It's an order and an ordinance. They are the threefold cord that cannot be easily broken. There must be within a territory a king, a priest, a prophet. And this time around, the king, priest, prophet formation is not individuals, but territories. Please follow me. And in allocating these graces, this is how the graces went. The prophetic grace went to Ghana. Listen. Listen carefully. The king dimension huh, went to Nigeria. The priest dimension went to South Africa. Watch this. These three regions, by the counsel of God, he hid this dimension like an Olympic fire in them. Now watch this. When Satan knew and saw this, he started bringing a lot of corruption. Now please, if those following from any nation, I love you, I love Africa, I love the whole world. I'm a child of God. Are we together? So I don't teach to communicate any bias. Ghana started corrupting the prophetic with religion and divination. That's why an average Ghanaian, he, he don't, he's, this guy is a thief and yet he's seen. Are we together now? Yes. He can look at you and say, I'm not born again, oh, but be careful. I'm hearing a sound like a car is hitting you. And you will think it's a joke until you see a tricycle that almost wants to capsize you and you remember and say, who is that guy? He's not a prophet. He's not even aware. He's a heritage that is territorial. Like mineral resources planted in a region. There are spiritual resources too. When you are domiciled within that region, you can tap into that advantage. I will soon show you the one God put in this country. Because there are. Are we together now? So there was a corruption. South Africa, because of what happened with Mandela and the over-liberalization, you see, priesthood requires discipline. Are we together now? The emblem, the signature of a priest is the discipline of compliance to the terms of priesthood. So the liberalization of everything brought them to a point of laziness, respectfully speaking, both spiritual and physical. You still see it today. I was in, in South Africa and I was rushing to go and enter a mall and a car was coming. And in Nigeria, cars don't stop for you. I stopped for the car and the man was honing me and said, pass. And then I stood and he refused to move. 
And then he said, pass. I, I moved. I said, wow. <laughs> Nigeria, my fatherland. Oh, no. There's, there's no time for that kind of thing. Now, watch this. The danger there is that when people begin to go down in their prayer life, everything eventually reflects their prayer life by going down to are we together now and then corruption sangomas began to arise right with all kinds of replacements and then the spirit of the lord now i'm sharing with these things as experiences are we together i'm not making doctrines out of them but these are experiences that i'm sharing with you and i believe that the spirit of god will bear witness with your spirit One thing happened, sir. Watch this. It happened just at the time Boko Haram was about to start. That's why I tell you to listen. What I'm teaching is prophetic. Because of the corruption that was happening in this move. Remember that Africa is God's firstborn. Every continent, major continent, in the similitude of the sons of Noah, has been given an opportunity to host God. And Africa is that rejected stone that must be given a chance and unfortunately, prophecies upon Africa as that continent that will lift up the banner of righteousness. Africa is the rejected stone that will host Christ. Are we together? And in Africa, by the privilege of God's grace, Nigeria is that firstborn. Listen carefully. What we are sharing tonight is very prophetic. And I want you to listen. Because of this corruption, sir, the Spirit of God decided to capture both the king, priest, prophet, bring all of them to Nigeria and hide them. I can tell you with all authority, standing in the office of an apostle, that these graces are hiding in this country. Now watch this. But those who carry these graces are not yet on TV. You don't know them. They don't even know they are the ones carrying it. It was disguised as to not corrupt their training. Please watch this. Because God stores his possibilities in men. You will soon know that some of those men are the ones looking at me now. Please listen very carefully. When that happened, God divided Nigeria prophetically into two. Are we together now? Mission fields and training camps divided Nigeria the south the east became mission fields and the north became training camps are we together now why because the hostility of darkness was a system of advantage that will not allow you to veer off too much one bomb is bombing there and it will bring you back so it's easy the apparatus to train you spiritually is already there. It's the reason why when God wants to really use you, he will find a way of helping your feet to touch the north and you return back. Even if it's a, a weak visit, it's not, it's not about the north. It's about a heritage. You just thought you came for a meeting. It's more than that. Where did Bishop Oyedepo start? Where the many of this is, it, sit down, sit down. Now, watch this. Watch this. It was because of this thing that manifestations like Boko Haram started. It's more than a political thing. Because every time saviors are about to come out of Zion, the Mount of Esau already has giants there. Are we together now? So God is hiding these graces and these mantles in men. And God concealed the awareness of it from them so that it will not corrupt the pace of their training. So you quietly went to bed one night and started seeing crusades 
Watch this now. You started seeing the sick get healed. And you just got up and said, ah, like Mary, what manner of vision is this? And you kept it to yourself. Are we together now? And you applied and applied and applied for NYC in Lagos. Your uncle assured you. He said, no, don't worry. Lo and behold, when your NYC came out, they sent you to Sokoto. And you went to God and said, Lord, what is this? And he didn't answer you. That your feet will touch and receive something. Because there are five elements by which the supernatural is communicated. Five elements. Number one is fire. Number two is water. Number three is the earth. Number four is wind. Are we together now? And number five is light. Every manifestation of the supernatural must subscribe to these elements to find expression in our world. Now, let me tell you something that will bless you. Looks like a little digression, but do you know that the same way there are mineral resources, sir, there are spiritual resources in this Nigeria too. I will tell you, there is an allocation of grace and possibilities. To the Yoruba nation, there are two great mantles that was given to the Yoruba. The grace for enlightenment, light, light, which reflects as intellectual prowess and the prophetic. The Yoruba nation is a heritage. You don't have to be born again. It's a heritage. So the average Yoruba person is extremely intelligent. You may not even know where this came from. And the average Yoruba person will easily step into the prophetic. You look at our fathers, the apostolic church, CAC, all of these men. Are we together now? Almost every Yoruba man of God with 50 years and above has a prophetic inclination. They may not call names, but they create possibilities. It's a heritage. The East connecting to the South-South. Are we together now? That grace, the spirit of Bezalel, the creativity of God and favor, these two graces were given to them. It's a heritage. An evil man can go to Iraq and head a company. It's not because he likes money. There is a grace. The North was given the seat of governance. It's a grace. That's why our people study these things. That's why they believe it is their right to rule forever. They are not talking out of nonsense. There are spiritual archives and divination shows there is proof. The average Muslim talk with him. He's not thinking business. He's thinking governance, politics, history. They don't even know what moves them to have that interest. If God wants to announce you in Nigeria, your feet must touch Lagos. If your feet does not touch Abeokuta and Lagos, you will never go global from Nigeria. It's a mystery. So no matter where you are, when your season of appearance comes, God will orchestrate an event that must cause your feet to touch this place. Go and find out your secular musicians. Go and find out all these people. Trace their lifting. Because Abel Kuta is the mother of Lagos. Lagos is a child that was born by a woman called Abel Kuta. It's a spiritual heritage. Now, I, I, I want to be sincere with you. There's no sentiments. To, I don't know where you come from. I've not mentioned where I come from too in all these things. So we're together. But I'm telling the truth is still the truth. So you can see why it was easy for me to step into an apostolic office. Much more than a call, there was a territorial advantage that already inclined you to governance. It takes the eyes of the spirit to see these things. 
Revelation is not something you look for. You are initiated into it like occult. It's a body of truth. You are called to be a partaker, a fellowship with a mystery. And if it does not come to you, you cannot see it. The looking for revelation is a waste. You only align yourself for the spirit of God to bring that truth to you. This is where we are in prophecy. The move of God is starting in a very strange way. And let me tell you, the character of that move is that it will no longer be a move that is just mainstream evangelism. Like walking on the street and just handing someone a placard and saying, what is your name? No, 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 it will not happen that way. That's why if you, de if you depend just on cyclical advice, you are going to miss something serious. The character of that move will, God will use every arsenal, creativity, dominion, everything will play a role. Other moves did not stress these things. They emphasized things like prayer. They emphasized things like the study of the word and all of those things. But the character of this move is not just something that will be spiritual in context. The move is spiritual, but it will have a body reflected in science reflected in lifting reflected in financial prosperity reflected in governance our assignment tonight as a people in prophecy is to know how to host and preserve if i can do this within the few minutes i have i will just touch one or two our time is already gone i didn't even realize the time has gone one or two and then we'll continue tomorrow are we together? Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. The Bible says that we have been made unto our God. Kings and priests. Now please look up. I feel so embarrassed but you won't believe it's now my meeting. My, it's truly it's now I'm looking at my notes to start the sermon. But yes. In, in all fairness. See how this thing works sometimes. Praise the Lord. No problem. O, 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 wherever we are. Now, there are many, there are many systems of identifying believers in the Bible. Two main ways of identifying, of classifying believers. This is, is really now our lecture starts. Number one is classification by identification. So believers are classified by their identification. And there are names that are given to us. For instance, believers are called sons of God. Are we together? Believers are called joint heirs with Christ. Believers are called the righteousness of God. Are we together? These are classifications with respect to our identification. There are many names we are called based on our identification. As many as received him, he gave them the power to become sons of God. But there is our classification by function and destiny. Are we together now? So the Bible classifies us by function and destiny. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. There are seven of them. Light, salt, kings, priests, ambassadors, royal priesthood, and so on and so forth like that. I think there's, there are about seven of them. Classifications by function and destiny. When you are mentoring believers and you are helping them to have a stable spiritual foundation, your emphasis is revealing their classification by their identity. Are we together? Because you connect them now to the Christ. And you know that the, the pivot of the believer's experience in the kingdom is the Christ. Are we together now? Your journey starts with the Christ. It is from the Christ, Jesus, now, that you now begin to move to the various areas of the kingdom life. So when it has to do with revivals and the move of God and the agenda of God and the program of God, 
our concentration must be to study our classification with respect to our functions and destiny. And it's one of it I want to talk about now. So Revelation chapter 5 verse 10 says, you are not just sons. You are not just the righteousness of God. You are not just all of these things. You are also kings and you are priests. You are light and you are salt. Are we together now? Acts chapter 1 verse 8 also calls us according to function. It calls us witnesses. Ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. So these are classifications by function and by destiny. Are we together now? Now the gospel of salvation. Please listen. There are different gospels in the Bible. Seven of them generally. But the gospel of salvation is that which is needed to bring believers into the new birth experience. The gospel of salvation is the revelation of the love of the Father. Are we together now? Captured and reflected in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ and man's response to that act of love. The, the, the message of the gospel of salvation is love. For God so loved. That was the motivation. So everything you see in salvation, you have to make reference to that statement. For God so loved. In the gospel of salvation, man does not do anything. Your only assignment is to understand the benevolence and the love of the Father as reflected in Jesus. His death, his, bur his burial, his resurrection, his ascension and his exaltation. You don't just stop in his resurrection. Ascension and exaltation. That's, that's the progression. He starts and then he's seated. You, he didn't just resurrect. He resurrected, went to the heavens and sat down. The Lord said to my Lord, sit down at my right hand. Are we together? When you believe that gospel, you receive what the Bible calls Zoe. We call it eternal life. But you've heard my teachings. It's not exactly a very clear, it's not an accurate rendition because everybody has eternal life. The condition for eternal life is not believing in Jesus. The condition of eternal life is passing through the womb of a woman. Once you pass through the womb of a woman, you have eternal life. Now, don't go around harassing any pastor. This is a believer's meeting. So when you see someone... Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? So you don't misunderstand me. Eternal life just means life without end. What happens to us at death is a change of dimensions, not cessation of living. The rich fool and Lazarus, sin one, they are on earth. Sin two, they are both alive. They can communicate. When you evangelize, you don't say, will you spend eternity? The question is location, not the possibility. So, whilst you pass through the womb of a woman, you have life without end. So the life God gave us is not an addition to that life. It's a quality of life that they call Zoe. Not God's kind of life. Our great fathers like Kenneth Hagin called it God's kind of life. You know that if you were alive, you would have still edited it because revelation is progressive. It's not the kind. It is the life of God. The kind means there are other types. The life of plants is still the life of God is the God kind of life. Because life, all life comes from God. The life of plants, the life of lower animals is still God's kind of life. Are we together? But this is the life of God that he gave us. Write this down. Our mandate as a generation is to host and preserve the ordinances of God across families and across our territories. Our mandate as a generation is to be able to host and preserve the ordinances of God. As far as the move of God is concerned, 
as far as the program of God is concerned. This is a generational assignment that we have to work together in synergy to know that there is a mandate upon us as a generation to make sure that we are able to host the ordinances and to preserve them. The song says, show us the ancient paths. It says, lead us along eternal highway. We want to walk the footsteps, the ways of Jesus. And I want to show you very quickly, number one, the first ordinance of revival, the first methodology, the first approach, the first way to both activate and to preserve a move of God within a life and within a territory is the ministry of prayer, intercession, and supplication. Please write it down. The first way God, his purposes, his move will be preserved in Lagos, will be preserved in any city is through the ministry of prayer. Prayer is a very interesting subject because the Bible makes us understand that there are vials in heaven. Are we together now? There are vials in heaven where the prayers of the saints are collected and stored. That means the prayers continue to speak to God even when you have stopped praying. Are we together now? This is very powerful. Any generation that the devil wants to alienate them from the move of God, the root of the attack will start from the prayer life. Look at America. What happened? Take prayer out of schools. It's a strategy. It's subtle. But that's the strategy. He spake a parable, Luke 18 and verse 1, to the end that men, if you are not a man, no problem. But once you are a man, it didn't say men in trouble. He spake a parable to the end that men always ought to pray and not faint. And now it's interesting the story. I don't want to run there because of our time. The Bible uses a man. He's showing you the power of prayer in manipulating a climate and a person to reflect God. So he borrows two people, a weak woman and a very unjust and wicked judge and combines them together. That the edge of that woman is her importunity, the ability to weary that judge with her consistency. So when the saints continue to lift up the incense of prayer, if you study history, you will study lands that prayed for 100 years, 50 years, let the move of God come. And then all of a sudden, someone was reading a newspaper one day and fell down and broke his chair because he saw an angel. And the angel did not come because of him. He came because an invitation had been sent many times from the earth to heaven. From the earth to heaven. The incense of prayer. Ask anybody who has seen any dimension of the move of God. The character of that move is prayer. Usually men begin to pray. They don't know why. They are driven by a force that is higher than their own definition. They just pray. Pray sometimes amiss. But they pray. So you start praying and pray like a fool. One day someone is strolling and he comes and says, can I join you? And they join you. And after a few times, let me tell you, when the move of God is starting, you know the move will grow to the degree to which women come. Because you see, listen, let me teach you this. A woman is a gate in the spirit. It's a mystery. Any church you are starting and you don't see women come, just know you are in trouble. It's true. Women are signposts. Who was the first person to see the resurrected Christ? A woman is a gate in the spirit. Listen. The womb that was given to a woman is not about a child. I hope you know a man and a woman are two dimensions of God. He just separated himself to use marriage and explain something. And then to double as a system of procreation. But the primary assignment was not children. There was something about him that cannot be known till he separates his dimension into two entities. Then join them back and says they are one. They can be one because they were always one. That 
means your marriage. If the assignment of your marriage is complete, we should not have children alone. We should also have a sermon. There should be something about the revelation of the Christ. So a woman and a man are two dimensions of God. If you don't agree, you added something to that description. Because if it's ideal, it should connect. I ask you to pray for me. You refuse to intercede for me and I've been delving into so many things now. Everybody say prayer. Yeah. Now, on a serious note, we're going to pray. But many of us here, one of the reasons why God brought you to this conference is because you've been laughing about the issue of prayerlessness. You are down in your prayer life, yet you are still the highest prayer warrior in your family. That's to tell you how easy it is Are we together? When the devil wants to destroy you, he will allow your prayer life go down. Then put you in the midst of prayerless people. So when you compare yourself with them, you will have a sense of advancement. And they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise. The first miracle, the first proof that God has come to you is that something begins to happen to your prayer life. The primary purpose of prayer, I've told you this was in the morning, is not just to receive things. This is a theology that must be corrected. There is a dimension of prayer that is made for reception and there is a dimension of prayer for warfare. But the primary dimension of prayer or assignment of prayer is a system of transformation. When you pray, you are like a snake that is molting. You are coming out of your old self into a higher dimension of you. He prayed and his countenance. If prayer was just for receiving, why did Jesus pray? To receive what? Because he was the fullness of the Godhead manifested bodily. The completeness of God. Yet he still prayed. And he spake a parable to the end that everybody here ought to pray and not to faint. But the second reason we need to pray again, please look up, is because the second heavens has a strange manifestation of demonic powers. They don't attack men. They attack territories. The classification of of the satanic kingdom as revealed by apostle paul in his lecture he said we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities powers are we together rulers of this darkness then he says spiritual wickedness they don't reign on earth they reside in the heavenlies so there is a domain where they reside and their assignment is to become the mind control systems of a territory. Please listen to me. That means that they have studied that civilization over many years and they have built the loopholes around that civilization. So if they look at Lagos, they know what to do. They know that Lagos does not have time. So when they want to attack you, they will use that angle to come into your life. When he wants to attack you, he will cause your boss to be so interested in you that you will start sleeping in the office every day instead of going back home. And by sleeping in the office, you are there, your secretary is there. He didn't say fornicate. He just knows that when he does something to time, many other things will go wrong in your life. They are controlling powers. And the system of putting them at bay is the prayers of the saints. I know that we talk a lot about Daniel and praying 21 days, you know, and in the New Testament, this is not true. Listen to me. It's not entirely true. The reason why Daniel was delayed was not because he was in the Old Testament. No. No. You have to understand that the ministry of prayer predates Old or New Testament. These are dimensions and ordinances that have been there before our civilization of earth started. There are many things you must study that are consistent with God's character. They started before Adam. Our own dispensation is just a little over 6,000 years. So the program of God did not just start with us. 
when you study the archives of the wisdom of God, our dispensation is number something out of many that has gone before us and will come after us. We have this idea that we are the first. No, many things happen on earth before we arrived. For instance, there was a day where Satan was not even created and God was alive and a program was happening there. Do you know the story of that generation? It's in your Bible. Satan was created one day before he happened. What was God doing? That's why the Bible says in the beginning, not from the beginning, God. There is a lot that happened. Then there is a day that the earth came as an idea of God. Job was telling us and foundations were laid on earth and the sons of God and the morning stars sang for joy. You were still not there. There was a program God was doing. Revelation ends with the beginning of another dispensation. We don't know whether we are number what. All we know is what is captured here. And that which the spirit of God will allow. Most of these details were what was captured in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Are we together now? These were some of the revelations that were shown the man Enoch. These were the revelations that when these angels, the Nephilims, when they came to the earth, this was the information they kept giving the daughters of men that lured them to sleep with them and produce this aberrated species of men. He didn't just come and meet the women and say, I like you, no. They taught them wizardry. They taught them how to manipulate fire and water and the elements of creation and to manipulate the constellations. That was what led to the flood of Noah. A judgment of a race that had been corrupted. Are we together now? Remember the woman has her seed and Satan too has his seed. Satan is not alone. He has a seed. Now this teaching is very interesting. Go and read the Bible. That Satan has a seed. And they are on earth today. Not everybody on earth is human. We are in the similitude of humans, but not everybody is human. Salvation is only for men, not angels, not powers. If you are not a man from Adam, you cannot be a partaker of redemption and salvation. That's why it was the elders that said, what is the lamb that was slain to receive unto them? You read in your Bible, us is an error in translation. The elders, the 24 elders, the creatures, they are not partakers of salvation. Let me stop here. I don't want to create any long argument. I just said the 24 elders and I could just feel, because many of you have been told many things about the elders. Those elders are, when the Bible calls somebody old from eternity, you should not think your dispensation. Let me just leave it there. The ancient of days. And then the Bible, in the similitude of that order of age, he calls some people elders. You really believe there are 6,000 years? Is that enough to be an elder in heaven? Prayer. I will stop here tonight. But there are six of them. Please make sure that we're available to receive it because it is powerful. Now, I hope that you are not just excited and clapping for a man you think is saying something powerful. Because it's more than that. The morale is to let you know that your family, Lagos, Nigeria, is at a very prophetic, defining moment. And God is counting on men and women and putting programs like this. Are we together? very prophetic, well-intentioned programs to be able to converge a people. There is a DNA of revival. That's why I told you yesterday, I said, or what's it today? I said, if you came here, you did not come by invitation. It's a solemn assembly. Praise the Lord.
These are the truths that are committed to us by the grace of God. It's a privilege of the election of grace to be able to supply these truths as a contribution to mature the body so that we go out of these old wise fables and all these things that continue to waste the time of Christians in the name of church to wean us out of this childishness that makes us to remain powerless. It's not an insult, but let me tell you, the move of God that is coming cannot be fought. Not by the anger of any man of God and not by the gates of hell. It is a move that has come to stay. You choose to join it or you are blown by it. It's a move of fire. It's a move of grace. It's not a move that is just based on education. It's a move that is governed by hunger. It's a move that is governed by his predeterminate counsel. The spirit of the Lord himself becoming the Lord and the captain of that move. And everyone who knows God is beginning to see the formation of that army. From region to region. Every time I travel... I continue to see the formation. I look at men and I can know by the spirit. They are part of that move. It's like a brotherhood. A system. We know ourselves. So you travel to a land and you see someone. And you can almost greet and hug the person. As if you've known forever. It is because of the Elizabeth Mary reality. It's not two children that were in their womb. No. It was a discussion between eternity and time. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. Oh, speak from your heavens and the earth will hear. My altar is calling you oh, my altar is calling you ah. let the fire from your altar touch my heart this is a song of men who want to be used by God let the fire from your altar Let the fire from your Shalabarandas Kapradis Galebaruski Adaba. Let the fire from your ah. And when you have no more words, this is what you say. Yeah, 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 yeah the cry of revival yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lagos lift up your voice the anthem of Nigeria says, Arise, O compatriots. There is also a call in the realm of the spirit. Awake, thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you light. As you are raising this cry, see your family. As you are raising this cry, see the generation connected to your grace. Hallelujah. Two prayer points tonight and we're done. Two prayer points. Father, if you search for a man in this move of the spirit, here is one.
behind me. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Find me as a worshiper. Find me as a man of God. Find me as a prophet. Find me as an apostle of the Lord. Find me as an instrument of fire. Hallelujah. Please listen. Let me establish the second prayer point. The Bible says, Seeing then that we are surrounded, so we are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. Listen very carefully. Seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, who are they? Alexander the Way, Apostle Babalola, Archbishop Benson Idahosa, they have joined the cloud of witnesses. They are waiting as they see the formation of the move that returns Christ. It says, seeing then that we are surrounded by a, so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside lay aside every weight listen and the sin that doth easily beset us and let us run with perseverance our generation has too many distractions it takes time to know god it takes focus to carry fire the kind of fire that is more than the fire for a service. The fire for a generation. No. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. One more time. Fill me up, God. Listen. I will pray a prayer for you today. You cannot afford to fail a generation. The anthem of Nigeria says, The labors of our heroes past shall not be in vain. You are standing on the blood of saints that were martyred as a heritage, martyred as a testimony. There's no room for carelessness. There is no room for church and religion. You must allow yourself to be stretched from border to border to sustain the capacity to host the size of God that is coming upon the earth. Hallelujah. There are three graces that will fall in this place tonight before we round up. Number one is a grace for spiritual hunger. Listen to me. Please listen. I'm about to pray for you. Hunger is a proof of health when someone gets sick one of the first things that goes wrong is appetite the moment you lose appetite is a sign to any doctor that something is wrong ah. we want to see you like a mighty rushing wind we want to dwell under the shadow of your wings I want to see you like a mighty rushing wave. 
I want to dwell over every limitation in my life. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. May that grace come upon your life right now. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands all through this auditorium. I release that grace. I call for that grace from the depth of the spirit. A hunger for the things of God. A hunger for the things of God. A hunger for prayer. A hunger for fasting. A hunger that nothing in time can drive. I impart upon you the hunger that drove the ancient to the secret place. The hunger that drove our fathers to the place of power. The hunger that drove them to receive the eyes of the spirit. The Lord is opening my eyes and in the realm of the spirit I'm seeing an eagle. An eagle is a representation of two things, vision and the prophetic. That means illumination, spiritual illumination and the prophetic. I'm seeing the number 31. 31 people are stepping into this anointing. Take that grace right now, inside, outside. I shift you by the Spirit of God. Step in, please just help those under the anointing so they don't enjoy themselves. Step into that dimension in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. The eyes that see and the ears that hear. The eyes that see and the ears that hear. I command a welling up of those dimensions from your spirit man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One more prayer and we are done. I know that many of you are waiting for me to minister and all of that. We will shift all of that and we will do it. Let's, let's teach the word. Let's understand this thing. And then I can have the time to prophesy. We will pray for the sick. We will just minister. Um, we will use tomorrow and we will make, we'll make the last session a miracle service. And then we can just flow and minister. But this that you are receiving... Is something that will change your life. Hallelujah. Yes. Bring the lady that will shout now under the anointing. Please bring her for me. The power of God loud to the hearing of everybody. It's time to shift you to levels in the spirit. My friend, this man, this man, Yes, I see the angel of the Lord pouring oil upon him. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. Hallelujah. Two minutes and we're done. I'm not going to. Hallelujah. Hold on. The angel of the Lord is bringing me here. There, is, there are two people here. Um, I just saw what looked like light. There is a very strong anointing. Just this room. I'm talking to you. You step into that dimension. Allah 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The last grace that you must receive. Please listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. You see, these things are not just charismatic manifestations of men of God who want to show that they are anointed. No. No. When you see the thing you have done with God and God brings you to a level, you are driven by the compassion of destiny more than all of these things. These are specific things that God wants to do in the life of people. Hallelujah. The last prayer point that I'm going to pray for you. You see, there is a quickening of the spirit that must come upon you not only to pray but to heighten your discernment. Please listen. This, our generation has almost zero discernment. We do not sustain the fortitude to, to access the impulses of the Spirit. Part of the indices to measure spiritual maturity is discernment. The ability to perceive that sense of perception in the Spirit is very powerful. And so we need a lavish manifestation of that grace. In the name that is above all names, I lift my hands and I stand here with the rod of a higher priesthood. And I decree and declare that men and women who must step into this grace right now, this this grace for discernment even by the ministry of the Holy Spirit I decree unto you in the name of Jesus step into that dimension now I activate your organs of interaction with the realm of the Spirit and I decree in the name of Jesus begin to understand the impulses of the Spirit In the name of Jesus Christ. I place upon you by the Spirit an intelligence that can help you read the writings on the wall. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you all the praise for tonight. And we ask in the name of Jesus that you will continue to live our lives grant us access to your light we will not fail you as a generation in the name of Jesus Christ for more online messages check us out at www.soundcloud.com forward slash TBC mainland Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the The phase of development Lord grant me the discipline